Hello and welcome, filthy casuals. It's Friday night, and I know. God damn it, crashed. <laughs> Why do you got to start off with that? It was such a lovely evening. Evening, man. All right, but welcome everybody. I know I've missed out on the last couple of sessions, and I'm terribly sorry. I did it before you started talking. I know, right? How dare you? Hey, Sander, what's up, man? <clears throat> now, for those of you that are new, uh, that are just joining us, this is definitely a rated, not PG stream. Uh, there is adult content on this stream. So if you, you are a fragile person or are easily offended, um, I'm just going to apologize now. <laughs> and I would probably be the only person to apologize. So... <laughs> So, for that, sorry, yeah. Anyway, moving on. I hope everybody had a survivable week, wherever you happen to be uh, in the world. Um, but we are finally getting back to our GURPS campaign. Finally. Um, I vaguely remember where we were. <laughs> I, I, I think I vaguely remember where we were. Did we like skip a scene or something? No, we ended in the uh, in the cellar. That's right. We ended in the cellar. There was a. That's right. What's up, Bam? My entry is not as funny as Crass. Well, you know, it is what it is. Hey, Sin. What's up? Well, of course you're here. You're. One of the players. <laughs> so let's get over to our dungeon fantasy scene over here. Beep. And here we are. Yeah. One of, <laughs> you mean the player. Oh, okay. And and there's Fudge of Publishing. How's it going? If if you you're gonna be seeing some of his content in the near future, um, I actually just got off the phone with him, talking with him on Discord. Uh, he is the publisher, author, writer, entrepreneur of uh, a game that some of you may or may not be aware of. Uh, it's a wonderful game. Uh, called Blood, Sweat, and Steel, and we'll hopefully be showcasing it live here on the stream, and we'll probably be doing a one-shot of it here in the near future. So, and hopefully, if our timetables match up, and we're able, to, we'll be able to actually interview him uh, live on the stream as well, and you guys can ask him questions. Ethereal Dragon, welcome. Are there boobs? If there are boobs, I'm in. Yeah, Crest, you, you're very boob motivated. <laughs> All right. Let me unmutify myself. Boobs, really, Crest? Always, always boobs. Oh, now you've suddenly gone silent. Oh, okay. Everybody's too busy. I was eating, man. You gotta let me finish. Oh, that, that's no excuse. Speaking of games, Bam coming in with the tier three sub. Holy Thank you for the continued support. Thank you. So to reintroduce our characters uh, back into um, the swing of things, we have our uh, half orc. I guess you could call him a barbarian, face tank, whatever. Uh, Hobart He's being played by Crast. He's a There's flail the, tank. There goes the dog cam again. Sadly, there are no dogs. They're all sleeping in bed with their mom right now. So that's more of the dog bed cam. <laughs> It'll go away here in a bit. Um, yeah, that's being played by, by Crast. We have uh, Lynch, the kobold sorcerer, being played by Sundari. We have... Actually, I should pro probably put your Twitch names with the player names at some point that might be a good idea yeah maybe on the top side of the token 
maybe on the top side of the token there you go um and speaking of which we have corvus being played by rev revna kitsune who's actually playing a, a kitsune go figure and uh then we have our newest edition fenrir being played by ghost wolf who's kind of the kitsune archer pin cushion <laughs> meat meat shield no that would be hobert never mind uh, see, there's Kratz trying to buy his own rerolls again. What did I tell you? You can't buy your own rerolls. One you day can. I will hack the Twitch. And you you never, work. you're never gonna hack it. All right. Look, if I can hack Zomboid, I can hack Twitch. Uh, but maybe, maybe. Well, last That's we right. left our in intrepid adventurers. We were currently delving back into the cellar underneath the uh, inn, uh, looking for evils unknown. It Rev seems so super excited about it. <laughs> I'm tired of the cellar. <laughs> I'm so tired of the racket cellar. Every time I'm in the cellar, something tries to kill me or eat me. Uh, yeah, one of you has come, no, several of you have come close to dying at some point. I've come close to dying twice. That, no, that, that's true. I take that back. All right, so last we left you, uh, you were, um, as you descended uh, down the stairs from the inn into the cellar, um, in pitch black, it wasn't lit like this. Uh, they have since lit the torches. You were assaulted by a bevy of giant humanoid looking rats or rat men and one of them looked extremely odd as um he had shards of crystal protruding out of his back parts other parts of his body and definitely protruding out of his hands like razor sharp claws but have since dispatched them accordingly um you found another room uh, off the off the cellar, uh, full of bodies, and then a familiar hole in the wall, leading deeper into the confines underneath the inn. Into the dark hole we go. Into the dark hole. All right, let me catch up here. It's been a while. I've actually got to familiar refamiliarize myself with some things. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sorry about that. No, no, it's not your fault. I almost canceled the night because I was like, I'm not ready. But then I thought to myself, I'm like, you know what? I'm never going to be ready unless I just jump in and get it done. And isn't that how most game masters feel? No, it's not perfect. It's not perfect. Yeah, it's not perfect. All right. So you were currently sitting um, just outside the tunnel leading to what you believe to be the sewer. That's where it led previous trips. Kaz, what's going on, man? Sorry, Kaz has an outrageous intro. Should be the add a reroll button, bam. Yeah, there is. Here's the Sindari button. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> what would you guys like to do moving forward? Oh, shit. Hellerbot, you reroll. Off to a good start. Yes, thank you, Dollar. I'll, I'll take a feel sorry for the, the party button. That, that works for me. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, we, we can change what it's called. We can call it the feel sorry for the party button. So, if I recall correctly, we had people tracking them, and they tracked them over here? Uh, yeah, you we do tracked see... them to going down the corridor. The footsteps were going down the corridor that's... Muddy footprints, yeah. <clears throat> Well, it is. It does appear going. to be a based upon your torchlight. It does appear to be a very narrow tunnel. 
about three feet wide and about six feet tall. So Hobart would probably have to crunch over a little bit. Which edition of GURPS are you playing? We are running 4th edition, or Dungeon Fantasy, which is based on 4th. You won't see any of the heavy lifting of the game mechanics in the background. You'll mostly just see what's on the screen. But you will see the dice rolls. Well, I guess the, the moving wall will take the lead. I'm assuming I can see the... Uh, the marks here the, the tracks yeah they're on the floor they're very obvious all right so hobert please make me a dexterity bro as you try to navigate your way into the tunnel or down through the tunnel oh barely um, anybody else who traverses into the tunnel, you can make also a dexterity roll. Ober managed, you managed to catch yourself in the torchlight, glinting like stalagmites and stuff hanging from the ceiling. Yep, yep, yep. Everybody seems to be okay so far. The tunnel ends at some point. Yeah. I, uh, I, I transitions. That's why I stopped. Okay. And if Fenru is going, he needs to make me a check. Uh, trying to figure out where it's at exactly. Like, um, I'm not um, the attributes button. Yep. Go to attributes and then go to dex. Dexterity. DX. Click on the DX button. Thank you. Oh, yeah, you're fine. You are as sound as a pound, sir. And Corvus, I'm assuming, is going. Uh, yeah, is there sir. a way to <laughs> unlock the map so it actually goes with the rest of it you gotta so, right click and drag the map yeah just right click and drag okay yeah that that's how you do it all right um paste you in this scene oh didn't realize you guys were so tiny in this in this scene That's fair. That's fair. I'm always tiny. I've never heard that tiny. word before. All right. Um, okay. I'm just double checking on some notes here. It's a very, very, very dark cave. Actually, this doesn't, cape doesn't even need to be lit like this. I can light the whole thing. We have entered the hole. <laughs> no, that's the toothy terrible. mom. Okay, no fog exploration, darkness level. Wow, is it really that dark? Sorry guys, I'm just fixing something really quick. Hey Lynch. Hmm? What would it take for you to make some of them glow potions? Some of those what potions? The glow potions. There we go. That's what I wanted. I don't know if I actually can. All right. 
Sorry, your tokens are so tiny in this scene. I didn't gauge how small they would be in accordance to the background picture, but we'll make do. I, I would have to ask Mr. Um, Mr. DM about that in some off time because it's probably an alchemy roll. Yeah, you're not doing it. You're not doing it while you're wandering around. You'd have to camp and do it in downtime. All right, so who's in the lead at the moment? The flail tank. Uh, the flail uh, tank. The flail yeah, I was going to say, is he still yeah. like, having a hunch over this whole thing, or does it open up? Oh, no, he'd be hunching over, but he needs to make me a, a blind vision roll, please. All right. As you make your way through the sharpened and very tiny tunnel, um, you notice um, like patches of slime and and dirt and gunk have built up, built up since you've last been down here. Nothing out of the ordinary, just kind of like this tunnel has been well, well more way used before or now than it has been before. Interesting. I assume it looks like there's been a bunch of rat men walking through here. Uh-huh. Uh, who's behind Hobart? That would I probably... Oh, okay. Then I'm uh, taking the rear. Do you know how to make oh, a well, blind roll? Uh... Blind roll for vision? Yeah, so you'd go to attributes, you'd go to vision, and then blind roll vision. You'd click on that button. Hey, Rev, you want to put yourself behind me, and then we'll have a marching order. It's a blind roll vision. No, it'd be attributes, vision, and click on the blind roll vision button. On the HUD. Okay, there it is. Ghost Wolf's new. We're we're teaching him the 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 run of the run of the mill here. All right, thank you. Um, Fenrir notices something extremely out of the ordinary. Um, there's a patch of slimes stuck to the ceiling nearby, but it's like undulating and bubbling. And I'd let everybody else know about it and let them okay. know where it's at and direction and how far away it is or what it, anything information-wise that people would need. In accordance, Hober, you're probably about a good yard before you walk under it. All right, I'm going to put the flail away since I don't obviously have room to swing it in the cave, and I'm going to ready an axe. Okay. And I will, uh... Oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. I'll go with a stick. I'll go with a stick. <laughs> I'm gonna reach back around uh, Fenrir, and I'm gonna grab Lynch and hold Lynch out and say, poke it with your staff. <laughs> hey. I, I bonk, Chris. I bonk over it with my stick. Okay. Now what? Not me, idiot. The slime. But I like this stick. It's magic. It'll be more magic once it's covered in slime. I don't think you know how magic works. He really doesn't. <laughs> Hello, glowing flail. Is it actually glowing? Not anymore. No, it's it's it stopped glowing quite a while ago. Did did you forget to turn it back on? Yes. Oh wait, go ahead. 
hope this time. I, I pull out Hobart's flail and hit it with the, hit the slime with it. You attempt to pull out Hobart's flail and make me a strength check. Uh, that's going to be amusing. He manages to pull the, your flail out of its holster, and it clangs to the ground with a resounding thud. In the slime? Clings no, down the ground. Slime. No, oh, the slime's, slime's on the ceiling. The ceiling. What, what other weapons has he got hanging off his belt? Uh, that, you would have to ask him. Yeah, I think that's it. I, I carry a flail and an axe. Let me see your axe. No. He's holding the axe. <laughs> I'm going to push him back behind me, put my flail back in my holster, and sweep through the slime with the axe. Quickly. Quickly. Uh, okay. All right. Um... Ooh, that can't be good. Well, as you sweep through it with the axe, you hear a slight hissing noise coming from your axe. As you quickly wrench your axe back and um, the the metal portion, not the haft, but the, the, the axe head is, um, part of it is the surface is like bubbling and melting. I'm gonna sling it like you sling liquid off of a hard metal object and you sling it off and molten metal and slime is stick to the wall and you hear more hissing as it slowly dissolves rock and uh, then you know smoke and wisps of smoke emanating from it and eventually it stops hissing I'm, I'm poking my head out from around Fenrir that See? See? You want to do that to my stick? I like this stick. Well, I don't want to do that to my face either. Now, is there any way around it, or is it right in the center of the corridor? It's right in the middle of the ceiling. Nice, in a nice bare patch in the ceiling. I set it on fire. Okay. How are you going to do that? That is a very good question. Mm -hmm. Fireball? In such a confined space? Eh, no, you could do that. It's not an explosive fireball. <laughs> Lucky and uh, found a girl. Oh, nice. Excuse me, what was that? I'm sorry. Uh, just a second, I'm looking up Create Fire. Okay. Um, fills an area with fire that requires no fuel. Cast in midair, it produces a sphere of flame which falls to the ground. This fire, this real fire, will, this is a real fire that will eventually ignite flammable objects. It touches, cannot be cast within rocks, foes, or water. Is it considered a foe? Yep. Well, that won't work then. Nope. It's considered a foe? Yes. Uh, Whether it's sentient or not, you don't know. Back up. Back I, hope up. I just pissed it off. Back up a little bit. Well, <laughs> you agitated it. I wouldn't say you pissed it off. Or even if it can be pissed off. I'll, I'll use flame jet on it, but everybody needs to back up. Yep. Yep. I, I don't want to... As, as funny as it would be to catch over on fire... You and I have right. different definitions of funny little man. 
obviously you can take as much time as you want to cast this so you can decide how many points you're putting into it but you still need to make the appropriate cast roll and uh what is that innate beam yeah, skill check to skill wield it um, all right let's see here so i need to roll which button was it to turn the arrow around which Hold way shift and scroll your mouse wheel Hold yep. shift Yep, okay, successfully okay. cast. Roll to attack. Ooh, okay, okay. Um. So I put uh, two points into it. Okay. Um, as the flame jet of fire gets closer to it, it doesn't make any sound, but it gurgles and bubbles like frantically, and it slinks back further away from you on the ceiling of the cave. Like outside of the reach of your flame jet. Anybody carrying a torch? Carrying what? Torches. Actually, I have one still. I, I don't. I'm going to light my torch. Okay. And see if I can herd it with the torch away from us as we walk down the tunnel. Isn't your torch already on? No, it hasn't been on for a while. Oh, I got it turned on. <clears throat> At least I think I turned it on. Hold on. Let me go to your torch entry here. Yeah, that yeah, was off. Now it's on. Cool. All right. You get close to it. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna you, like. You gotta get closer to it. Well, yeah, I'm, what I'm, I'm <laughs> describing what I'm doing here. I'm holding the okay. torch at arm's length and kind of sweeping it side to side to see if it pushes it down the tunnel. Okay. Um... Did everybody else move back too or? Yes. Yeah. Make it... Okay. <laughs> All right. Um... As you wave the torch, it like shimmers and shudders. It, it it's like like uh, are you familiar with like ferrofluid? Yes. Except the ferrofluid is like shuddering like it's on a bass speaker when you when you wave the fiery torch in front of it. And then it eventually it sh it uh, shrinks back into like this like hanging globule. And then, like almost like a, a pendulum, it swings back and swings right at you and detaches itself from the ceiling as the black viscous fluid flies at you. What do you Batter want to do? Torch. So you're going to make a parry wanna, or a block? I'm going to... Well, I want to hit it with the torch while it's in the air. Well, you got to make a defensive action at this, at this point. It's actively attacking. Mm, right? Then I'm going to parry. With an no. improvised weapon? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Well, hang on, not here. Unless... About, so, did anybody else move up with Technically, it's me? a club. Yeah. I don't think anyone if, moved if up everybody, with you. If everybody's up there, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a retreating parry. Oh. Oh. So, like, back off and swing the wild, wild swing the torch in front of you? Yeah. Okay. Torches are just flaming clubs. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, you back up, you retreat dodge, you or retreat parry, you back up, like take a, a wide step back as you swing the torch in front of you. The fire crackling through the cave as this giant gout of flame erupts from the torch. You hear a shriek, a small like shrieking noise, 
as the torch connects with this viscous fluid and it slaps it into the side of the of the tunnel as it just goes from a ball of viscous fluid into a flat pancake thump, against the side of the cavern wall. Did it stop moving? Uh, now it's just kind of bubbling and curdling on the wall in like a flat pancake shape at the moment. No damage was room, caused, though. Is there room to get by it? Mm, you're going to be about a half a foot to a foot away from it, trying to sneak by it. So no, because mm, I'm already crunched not. up in this thing. I'm going to turn my head over my shoulder. Thoughts, guys? And anybody else anybody want to else give this a shot? Because... Is it on the ground now? Yes. No, it's actually stuck against the right side oh, of the wow. wall. Hmm. And you can slowly you see it slowly see it undulating up the wall back up to the ceiling. Really is, is there like a, if I were to do create fair is there a place that I could put it where it's not in midair but still hitting the thing I mean you could create it against the wall yeah well it's if it's in midair it'll fall to the ground so that's why I was kind of yeah it probably you probably won't be able to create it to the point where it'll hit it Can you get it on the ground? <laughs> this is less of a combat encounter and more of a puzzle. <laughs> Homer, Homer, put it on the ground. Yep, Homer's attacking with the torch. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Over walks up to it. <laughs> Go ahead and swing. Uh, if you've got club, otherwise default. Uh, let's see here. Natural. I think attacks, club defaults X flail. to dexterity. Yeah, but how do I do that as an attack? Oh, um. Uh, let's call it. Oh, you don't have that skill. <laughs> um, let me look it up really quick. Okay. This this is GURPS. If if it wasn't there wasn't any book looking up, it wouldn't be worth a damn. I'm I'm cool with that. I'm I'm more than happy can... to improvise. Uh, I just need I'm to know what to push. Okay, no, no, that's fine. Um, do 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 do. Because I really don't want this thing to eat my axe. No, that would be bad. But funny. But yeah, no, it'd be hilarious. Oh, let's see here. Do do. Would it be under a different skill? You know? It probably under. Oh, I know where it's under. The weapons and gear section. <laughs> um, let's. No, that's axe mace. I don't know. That kind of falls under the category of club, doesn't it? Hmm. <clears throat> let's let's go um, go ahead and just make a axe uh, a test and then I'll add the um add a uh, minus two so like just throw it on there from the uh from the bucket I got you 
Oh, okay. That's fair. Um, it's attempting, going to attempt a retreating dodge. As it quickly scurries up to the ceiling and back. Ooh. Oh, I'm just trying to get a little acid ball. Fast when it wants to be. Hey, Joker, how much oil is still in that lamp that I took earlier? <clears throat> how much oil's in what? The, oh, lamp the lamp that I took earlier? Um, it's got probably a smearing of oil in it, unless you Six refilled it. I'll say, because I've been using the torches. I was saving the lamp. Um, I would say you probably refilled it from the end when you were upstairs before you came down here. Okay. And I believe they last, one second. Anyway, they last two on for one, an, an hour, two hours, if I'm not mistaken. We can uh, tip, the, dip an arrow tip in the oil and fire it at it. Uh, that's part of what I was thinking. Back. I mean, I could look up the lamp, see here. Uh, it's not a helmet lamp, it's not a shield lamp. Uh, what kind of lamp was it? Bullseye lamp? No. Really? No, I think Maybe. it was just a standard oil lamp. Uh, we can model it after a bullseye lantern. Um, six hours on one point pint of oil. Ten yard beam requires a hand. Wow, six hours? What? Oil lamps last a long time. I would assume that you've probably got... I'm going to say it's quite a sizable lamp. It's not small, so it can probably hold about two pints of oil in it. And I'm, I would say it's full. All right. Corp is going to go. Albert, hold on. Fenrir. Of course, it's gonna unscrew, <laughs> like open up the little reservoir in the lamp. <laughs> put some of this on one of your arrows. I turn around, put the arrow that I had, or unnotch the arrow, put it uh, oil on it, notch it okay. back. Okay. <laughs> then I'm gonna turn towards Lynch and say, "Hey, light this, please." I've Corvus has got a torch. Oh, you got a torch on you? Yeah, you just hold the torch under it. Yeah. All right, so if it's and or wait until it's lit, and as soon as it's lit, I'm going to fire at this. Uh, Put a piece of cloth around it first, around the head. Otherwise, the oil's just going to all fly off of it. True. So we're standing up at the front wondering why both the kits in there are stripping. What we're trying wow. to try to well, I'll, I'll just rip a little piece off of my tunic or something. <laughs> That's what I was going to say anyway, too. Just... I'll, I'll just rip a hole from where I got impaled earlier. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to warn you right now it's at a minus three for distance, unless you get closer to it. I'll move closer. And it is. What are you sitting on right now? You're sitting on probably, um, so I would say a minus one in torchlight because Hobart's close to it at this point. Um, you see, yeah, so there's no penalty at that range. So yeah, that would. We'll send it there. Okay, go ahead and make a uh, shot roll. Make sure you target it first. You can double right click on it, or you can use the the target tool on the left side. Oh, hello, hello, crit success. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> dang. Okay, the arrow, I'm not going to even, I can't even roll to defend against that. The arrow 
whizzes out of the darkness through in between like chunks of rock hanging from the ceiling like with deft expertise as you can hear it whistle down the cave ever so slightly and um it perfectly sails past Hobart and sinks itself centrally into the slime's overall gelatinous body and you can hear the sh like tiny shrieking disembodied shrieking it seems like it's coming from it but it doesn't seem like it's coming from it as it bubbles and hisses and you can see the arrow slowly melt into the body of the slime as the fire engulfs it and it catches wholeheartedly on fire and after a brief 30 seconds to a minute the fire slowly starts to go out the ceiling of the cave fills with smoke and it's just a dripping mess off the ceiling onto the floor as you hear the occasional splutch noise as parts of it drip off the ceiling and splat into a puddle on the floor. Perfect. S'mores, s'mores. I'm gonna turn around and look at Fenrir. You couldn't have done that 10 minutes ago. I didn't have flame and arrow. I had to take a moment to think about it. <laughs> I was going to just fling oil at it and set the whole thing on fire, and then I thought better of it. All right, all right. So do you guys continue down the cavern? Yes, keeping an eye out for future slimes. That's fair. Well, uh, would tracking help out on anything in this corridor? No. No, I would not. Actually, let me group you back up a little bit better. That way I can get you guys situated in the next section easier. All right. Sorry. <laughs> Trying to get everybody situated properly here. It's okay. I'm arguing with my dog. That's fair. It's like, no, no, you no. can't. Dog's winning. No, she's very confused when you bark back at her. All right. As you make your way towards the end of the tunnel, you come upon a familiar site of the um, sewer line. The, the closer you get, the more the scent assails your senses as you go, hmm, we must be close to the sewer line. Sploosh. Careful, it got deeper. Across the way, you see the familiar look uh, door, um, the secret door, which is hanging open, leading into the rune-lined gallery that you'd once seen before. Did we close it? Uh, you know, I don't remember you saying you closed it. No, we didn't close it. This Which area is tracks lead? roughly a six foot by six foot stone line filled calf deep with sewage. Which way did the tracks go? Uh, they disappear into the sewage. Um, but Hobart needs to make a health check. Uh, a blind health check, excuse me. Uh... For disease or poison? 
Oh, fuck, yes. <clears throat> Damn it. Okay, yeah, you're fine. Yeah, because uh, like before, it you can possibly staying, uh, spending enough time in the sewage, you can gain sewer rot, which is not good. Yep. That's why I clear That's why I clear Disease? Yeah, it's a disease. Well, I'm at plus eight for that. Plus eight? I'm resisting. A plus eight. Oh, wow. All right. That's fair. I'm um, a cobalt. But Lynch, go ahead and make me a blind perception check. Lynch, you do notice something different, but familiar about the rune-lined hallway as you peer through the, the ajar doorway leading to the south. The ruins are the same, but the effect, the, the glowing effect coming out of them isn't solid red. It's more of a prismatic rainbow, and it's ever-changing. Um, can I see what's changed? Yeah, it's yeah, just, they're, other than, they're, other than they're color, glowing multiple colors. Because I, I know it wasn't doing that when we left, so do, can I see what's different? Are you going to try to discern their arcane? Um, I have hidden lore magic writing. That'll work. Uh, go ahead and make it at a minus four. Blind roll, please. Um, I'm not sure I can do that at hidden. I think if you hold down control and click on it, we'll test that, see if it works. Either control, alt, or shift. Can you see that? Can you see that? No. Control worked. Okay, so control is for blind checks. Um, and it should um, be at my I put four in a bucket, so. Yeah, yeah, I'm that's perfect. Um, this. You're not 100% sure what's changed with it, but it's not good. You discern that the color determines some sort of random magical effect. But they're all hostile. It's hostile magic. These runes were not meant to help. They were meant to hinder. But they've somehow been repurposed with different magic. And you can feel the magic emanating off of it. So can you, Corvus. Oh boy, this seems fun. That would mean Fenrir can too. I know, yeah, I was going to say, if Fenrir, does Fenrir have Major Zero? If he's a Kitsune, he's supposed to. Oh, that, oh, it's a racial thing? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the Kitsune in, in the area can feel <sighs> the hostile magic vibe emanating from the hallway. Hey, Alpha. Cobra's going to look at Lynch and say, red was bad. Rest of color is good. No. <laughs> Blue, obviously, healing. <laughs> um, or is it red um, healing? Because potion red. <laughs> I don't is know there... if this last time. Okay. Do we even need to go down this hall before we start messing with it? You're not going to find out what it me. does. You're not going to be able to discern anything other than what you've already been able to Can I roll out. a tracking check and see if there's any tracks or anything? 
that I can notice down either the hall hallway or anything else? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, make it at a uh, go ahead and make it out of minus one. Here, I'll send that to you. Make it at I'll, a minus what? You don't need to worry about it. I just sent you the the modifier. So just make a tracking roll, but make a blind tracking roll. So hold down control and then click the button. Hold down control and what? Click on tracking. So at the top where you do, you would be okay. There you go. Oh yeah, Fenrir's like, he reaches out, digs a finger into like a crusty part of the wall. They've been here. And he points to the stairs leading up into the hallway and you see muddy footprints coming out of the sewage. But you also see scratch marks that he points out along the walls leading um, east down the sewer. Outside of the sewer. So not, so not through the rainbow wall. No, it goes all the way through the, the passage of the rainbow walls. You have muddy footprints going down the rainbow wall corridor. And you have uh, scratch marks going down the east side of the sewer tunnel. Yeah, so the, there's scratch marks leading down this direction. Almost like it was... Uh... Back and forth, not in one direction. Yeah. Um, is there a discernible pattern to the colors? Go ahead and make me... Um, that would probably be a straight intelligence check, so go ahead and make me a blind intelligence check at a minus four. Minus four? Minus four. Lighting here sucks. You're trying to figure it out via torchlight. giant glowing rune. Mm-hmm. Um... You assume that there's a pattern, but you can't quite figure it out. Like, they seem to be random, but there's the occasional, like, okay, like, it's almost like Simon says, but then you lose the pattern. Hey, Mad Dog, what's up? Um, is this considered a enchanted item? Um, yes. It's an enchanted well, it's structure, in so I guess that falls under that same category. I don't know if this... I have counterspell. Uh, no, no you, you cannot no. counterspell an enchantment. Unless it specifically <laughs> says you can counterspell an enchantment. Well, it just says nullifies one ongoing spell. Cannot counter spells that make permanent changes in the world. E.g. Yeah, this is permanent. Fire or flesh to stone. Okay. Um, is there a way that I could start destroying the runes on the walls? It would take you a very long time. time. Fuck. And the longer you down here, you're down here, the more tension you're going to attract, especially if you're making such a loud noise, trying to destroy glowing runes on a wall. <coughs> uh, how many sets of footprints were going up into the glowing hall corridor? Uh, several. I mean, there, there's so many, it's, it's, it's just like a, an amalgamated mess of sewage footprints. You could you could guess okay. anywhere between ten to hundreds. Okay, Lynch has plan. Okay. Lynch thinks that there has to be a way that these guys keep walking back and forth between around this thing. So if we it's wait long enough. Us. There's bound to be some guys that walk back and forth between this thing. So we could just take whatever they have that's letting them go through this thing and then walk through it ourselves. 
that has the advantage of Hobart being able to beat stuff up. You you know what doesn't give Hobart an advantage? He's impulsive. He's impulsive. He can't stand around waiting. I didn't say it was a good plan. I said it was a plan. And you, I would may have you make another impulsive check, but you've already hit one, so. Yeah, um, that's like my favorite disadvantage that I took, so. Which is why I didn't take curious. Mm. Um, I need Fenrir, Hobart, and uh, Lynch to make a health roll versus disease. At a plus eight, um, is it oh, blind? There's hardly any left. I'm sorry. A blind health roll? Yes, please. I knew Hobart was going to make it. All right, you're all fine. Fenrir does kind of like um, gesture like he's just about to upchuck and then he's like, he waves his hand as he's holding his his other hand over his mouth and he's like, I'm okay, but we need to leave soon. Now, the glowing corridor, are we sure that it has something that uh, will attack us, or would I understand that? Or Lynch explained to you that the magics embedded into the runes on the wall are hostile. Thank you. That that's Torch. all I know. Hostile. Yes. Now, Torch if you were to make anything. a blind somatology check for me, Mister uh, Mister Lynch, Mr. you might Lynch. discern more. Um, actually, um, and I will give you the button to roll. Hold on. So I was going to say I'd fire an arrow down the hallway. Go ahead and roll that. For the arrow? Sin. No, for sin. Sorry, the BRB screen's up. I'm still fighting the tail end of a nasty cold here. Um, your um, somatology check. Uh, let's see here. You you feel like the colors relate to different elements to a certain extent. Like, obviously you're familiar with the red effect that happened, tried to happen to you guys before, that is has some sort of dehydration effect. Um, and it, it's like a burning effect. The blue looks like it would like hit you with electricity or lightning. Um, uh, the green, you're not 100% sure what the green effect is, but you have something to do, it might have something to do with impairing your judgment. That's about the best you can come up with. I'll pass all that along. How long was this all? Um, depends on how many hexes it is. Uh, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven yards by about seven yards wide, give or take. Well, no, that well, doesn't make gonna... so by about by about a yard wide. Excuse me. I'm going to expand on Lynch's idea. Instead of us waiting for them, we know which direction they're coming from. Why don't we go take their shit? I'm okay with that, too. Mm. I just don't know what that's going to do, and that could be very bad. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you this. Uh, if you tarry too long, things will get bad. So we're no, we know they're coming back and forth from east. 
but exploring no, scra- around scrapes on the wall from the east. Yeah, and there's you... muddy or sewage footprints going south. But investigating other areas that you have passed by might be a wise idea as well. Why don't we head east? We haven't gone east, right? Correct. Yeah, let's let's go east and see if we can find what's going on down that way that's bringing them here. Poor dead bastard still here. And that was the doorway to go back into the cellar. Does that have an actual door on it? What? The door leading back. The, yeah, it's the a secret door. So can we close that? Hold on. Um. Hold on. Grass, make me roll. After I would have not or fired that arrow, I would have notched another one. All right. Wow. That was a hell of a target. Yeah, yeah, it was. (laughs) All right. Um. Crest, you are, hold on, trying to get rid of some of these windows here. Uh, do, 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 where is the effect I am looking for? Oh, come on. Where is it in here? I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. All right, we'll have to do that for now. All right, as you... A trudge through the sewage towards the east. Um, a net, a very well hidden net, falls from the ceiling and wraps you, entangles you into the sewage. You cannot move. I think I got it in my mouth. I'm gonna frame. Do I need to roll something to frame? Yeah, make a blind dexterity check at a minus four because sewage, dark. No, it'd be uh, no, it'd be uh, minus three. Can can I help him? Okay, make it a straight dex roll then. Okay, yeah, you managed to get the. the net off of Hobart and you kind of throw it back into the muddy sewage. You're like, what the hell was that? Uh, now, would there be any way to search further on with for making sure there wasn't any more traps? Yeah, but it would slow your progress. Okay. I I think I would rather have slower progress than not getting netted or worse. That's fair. Because I'm already kind of low to the ground, and then that wouldn't help me. All right. Let me pause it one more time here. All right. I need... Everybody to make me blind perception rolls. Those with hearing can add your hearing bonus. I think everybody can hear, can't they? Well, no, uh, the Kitsun have a bonus to hearing. So does Hobart. Oh, no shit. Well, well, well. Mm-hmm. What? Specifically, I have acute hearing. Oh, I have acute hearing. 
<laughs> you said perception. Yeah, You'd be sorry. hearing. I, it was supposed to be oh, blind. I that one, then. hit the wrong Don't button. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I hit shift instead of control. Actually, I don't even think I hit. Oh wow. That all the oh, way down. Okay, Hobert. Damn. As you, you know, pull the netting off with the help of your of your party mates, you're like he perks an ear up and holds his hand to his head to the side of his head. Obert's like, what's that noise? And Fenrir and Corvus hear a slight buzzing sound echoing from east down the sewer hallway. We have incoming. Possible sewage in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what does the buzzing sound like? Like a generator or something like that or something running or? Insects. Lots of insects. Oh, I don't like insects. Nobody likes insects. So, you, me to pick you ready your fireball? weapons? Do you I mean, prep yeah. anything? Be mindful. If you are wielding two-handed weapons, you have no way of wielding a torch. That's why I'm still wielding an axe. I already have I have a light spell on, so... Yeah, you have a light spell on. Corvus is holding a torch. Fenrir is holding a torch. Am I holding a torch? Really, really need to figure out how to... Uh, you don't have to you if you don't want one. ...light items. Would you rather have I had your torch bow out? out? I had a bow out with uh, with an arrow knocked. Okay, so you would definitely not have a torch on currently. Okay, that's fair. Um, give me a second, and I will turn. I will turn your light off. <laughs> well, I really didn't need light. I had Hobar in front of me, and well, yeah. I mean, that's that's all. Corvus obvious. behind me. I had light all around me. Is is Corvus yeah, holding a torch and yes. whatnot? Okay. It's torch in one hand, Kadachi in the other. Okay. Okay. Um. In coming from uh, the into the torchlight. Mm -hmm. Uh, if I can find them, there they are. How long has it been from when I cast on the slime to now? At least 10 minutes? Oh, at least. Because I get back an energy reserve every 10 minutes, so... Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I just don't guess I'll get them both right. You see that buzzing into view. It looked like a swarm of something. Cave gnats, to be precise. A swarm of cave gnats. A large swarm of cave gnats. Oh, and you're not grappled anymore. Can we tell what kind of wings they have? Like, are they like regular gnat wings, like gossamer style? No, nah, just regular cave gnats. Like, if they, get, <laughs> if, if they get wet, are they going to be able to fly? Yes. But they're so numerous, uh, it, it really all depends. All righty. We gotta get. Nah, I'm not gonna do the combat music. That's fine. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm just staying out in front, from in front of uh, Lynch. 
seeing the fire jet. Yeah, ain't happening. Where is Lynch behind me at? To your the above above you. Behind okay. You. Back into your left. Okay. Thank you. Be one with the ball. <laughs> oh my god! I'm gonna hit him with my torch. You're gonna hit him with your torch again. Yeah. Okay. You do They're know nuts. you. You're still at the penalty. You're at a penalty, and you're at a minus one for torchlight. Okay. So minus three. Yes. There's a dog down here. What are you talking about? It's an improvised mace. <laughs> I'm good using X. Just, just let, it, let him use X. Roll for damage. These things don't dodge. Oh, shit. It's stuck in a loop. Good, that means I'm continuing to do that much damage until it gets unstuck, right? No, it's stuck. <laughs> eight damage, eight damage, eight damage, eight damage, eight damage. Right, right. Give me a second. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to do that. I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, give me a second. <laughs> Uh, uh, scurry, swarm attacks. Attacking a swarm. Any attack against a swarm hits automatically. A swarm gets no defense roll and rarely has damage resistance. Swarm takes injury as if it were diffuse. Oh, lovely. Shields can crush flying creatures. A shield does 2 HP per turn and can attack the same time as weapons. Stamping does one HP per turn. They're flying, so it doesn't really matter. Um, uh, diffuse, if I'm not mistaken. That'd be exploits 55. I don't understand why I didn't give him the diffuse ability. But that's fine. We looked this stuff up mid-game because it's a learning experience. Actually, it'd just be easier if I just bring up my book. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Since I have a feeling I'm going to be doing a, quite a bit of referencing tonight to begin with. What is initiative based off of, anyways? Uh, your things. your basic speed. There it is. Okay, now we're cooking with Gaius. You, you guys might want to consider setting me as the party leader. Diffuse basically means it doesn't have a uh, specific hit location, if I remember right. Uh, eyes and limbs are present, can still be crippled. Impaling and piercing attacks any size never do more than one HP of injury. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Ignores all knockdown and wounding modifiers for hit location. Eyes and limbs, if present, can still be crippled. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's fair. All right, so you did basically one point of damage. As the swarm just kind of evaporates and avoids the torch that you swung at it and then reforms as you reset your swing. Hmm. Okay. I forgot, this is an atypical encounter. This is something totally different. That no. also, it gets me used to doing, using diffuse creatures, which is always fun. Consecutive normal punches. Can, can we get, can we actually squeeze around them? Yeah. Let's see how many, okay, one, two, three. 
Here, let me move myself back where I was at. Sure. So I Go can ahead. get the proper movement here. And don't forget, you know, you do have your maneuvers so you can set your penalties correctly. So, Hooper, you only did a step, so that would have just been a regular attack. Oh, yep. Forgot about that. It's been a couple, it's been a few weeks, so I don't blame you guys for not remembering the maneuvers. Dang it. Okay, so my move is seven, so one, two, three, four. There, that would be seven. And that is a move and attack? Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't think this is going to do anything with the Kodachi. So how much of a penalty am I looking at now if I try to swing at it with a torch? Because I don't have club or anything. It's you automatically, same... you know, you automatically hit. It's a swarm okay. target. So you so attack it? Is... Okay. Let's see. Boop, boop, boop. You don't what have to roll to attack. I'm just wondering, uh, are you asking if you're attacking it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you hit a few cave gnats as they fall out of the sky and plunk into the sewage below. That's it. Okay. I think we could probably just move past these things, guys. Okay, and you. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, Lynch, you are moving at half speed in this shit because you're you're smaller. Well, is your size modifier minus one? Oh no, you have a normal size modifier. Then you're fine. I was gonna say anybody size modifier minus one or lower would be treating each hex as two hexes. Two hexes. I technically don't have a size modifier, but I am only two four. I know. No, that's fine. You're you're fine. You're still big enough to be able to stand up with the big boys. Being that I could only move four, uh, that was the movement. I mean, I turned towards them. Uh, is there any way to swipe with the, just like the the bow? Being yeah. I don't want to fire an arrow at something that's. Yep. You can only move yep. four. Uh, my movement says four. Um, no, you can move. Yes, he's under medium encumbrance. He's carrying a lot of stuff. He's a hefty boy. He's a hefty boy. All right, so you automatically strike the swarm with the uh, the half or the you know side of your bow, striking it for a point of damage. That's it. <laughs> yep, yep. Okay. Hey, hold on. Yes, little yes, gnome. Little do, gnome. Do, do you have... Gnome, how dare you. Do, do you have another torch? No. Maybe. No, definitely no. Mm, do, does does anybody have a second torch? I don't have a torch on me. Hey, B. <laughs> oh, Carver oh has a shit! Torch? Here comes the claiming torch. No, I'm. <laughs> I'm. I'm. Are you using? Are you wielding a torch right now? Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm gonna I, cast. Rip sees where this is going. I'm gonna cast glue on his torch. You're gonna cast uh, glue on the torch. Uh, um. um that, blue trap. Where, where exactly on the torch are you casting it? Is it the whole torch? I, I mean, probably. Because it, it would glue it securely to his hand. <laughs> All right, there. Have a good night. 
I'm suddenly picturing a cat with tape on it's its ball. It's just glue so he can <laughs> catch the cats and not have them break up. It's, it's, it's your call. It's, yeah, it's like sticky paper. I think you'd have a better chance of flame jetting them. Cause they're... Well, Wait, flame jet's not you... an area of it and not an area attack. How many tails does Corvus have? Oh, wait, he's got the two. one. Oh, he has two. Excuse yeah, me. I haven't gotten to fix it. Oh, that's that's twice the amount of glue paper. Oh, no. See? Oh, no. Sorry, sorry. Well, I'm not going to tell I'm you what you can and can't do. What What is your action this turn, uh, Lynch? <laughs> oh, I'll just load a fireball. All right, so you concentrating? Yeah. Lynch is the only wizard ever that sighs in disappointment when he loads a fireball. <laughs> it's because I don't have anything else yet. All right. That brings us to our intrepid cave swarm here. All right. Um, it's automatically there are no attack or defense rolls doing its listed damage to its victims against tiny creatures like insects, DR0 clothing. Zero clothing gives complete immunity for two seconds while armor grants five seconds of immunity. Then the bugs get in and the protection becomes worthless against larger creatures like rats. Uh, armor protection normally with its DR. Okay. So I have notes in here that tell me exactly what it does. And who heard it first? What's in front of it? I'm gonna say Over. you. Well, <laughs> but to be truthfully honest, I figure it would have gone for me because I'm the one not holding a torch. No, no, torch doesn't actually bother it. All right, so the gnats swarm Hobart and begin stinging him mercilessly or attempting to. What do you have armor on your torso? Do you do you have any exposed spots on your on your persons where you don't have nope. damage resistance? Well, where I don't have damage resistance, yes. Where? Um, hang on here. Let's see here. I don't, don't, don't think, think armor resistance DR from your flats or race or something. Well, I'm I'm wearing stuff, but they don't have DRs on some of the stuff. I don't think. Like well, I want to say, DR zero is still helps. DR DR zero still helps. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, so that goes straight for your face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty much. Well, I've got a scale helmet. I don't. That's not a face. So no, I don't. I don't have anything on my face. Everything else is covered. Okay. Um, so they swarm in and they start trying to sting and pepper your entire body, basically consuming you. I mean, have you ever seen what happens when a when a swarm of bees latches onto something? Yes. That's basically what happens. But you also get stung in the face. Not in the eyes, just in the face in general. A few manage to, to find, you know flesh and sting you there you take one point of damage okay and you start feeling bugs crawling in under your armor all right does it like am i seeing a portion of the swarm disappearing underneath my armor yep okay did you already take the damage off of me or do i need to no go ahead just take one point of damage Okay. These are extremely painful too. Now, while does Hobart have high pain threshold or anything else like that? Um, I 
want to say not high pain threshold. I got hard to kill, but no, no high pain threshold. Okay. So you're currently minus one shock. It's okay. I, I only have one thing to need to do. I'm going to quickly hold my breath and I'm going to lay down in the sludge. Oh shit. Oh okay. Um how do we play this? Play um Okay, um, you see Hope okay, you just see Hope. Disappear under the sewage. So, I still have my fireball that I didn't throw last round. Mm hmm. Can I just hold it? Yeah. But you either have to build on it or cast it. You can't just hold it indefinitely. Not that oh, I, if I'm remembering correctly. Sure. I'm remembering correctly. I'm gonna, I'll look it up. Go ahead and do your thing. Okay. Okay, uh, Albert, you slush under the waves. Make me a health check at a minus three. This is a disease. For the disease. All right, so that would make it a minus one. Make sure you don't ingest anything. Uh, blind or not? Blind, please. Oh. You managed to keep the sewage out of your your ears, eyes, and nose and mouth, but you're in. You're currently holding your breath. Okay. You are now currently. You just fell prone. Yep. Okay. What would you like to do, Corvus? Steamed gnats. Anyone? <laughs> so the gnats went under with him, or? Yeah, there's maybe a like like uh, a like a smattering of them hovering above the water, not enough oh, to really cause a threat. The majority are under the water with him. Well, let's swat at the cloud over. All right, causing a point of damage. You see a few bubble up into the water, kind of buzzing on the surface of the water, like they're they're drowned or dying. Ben Rear. Well, at this point, I mean, if there's not really much above, it doesn't seem like it's going to be dangerous. What I'd do is I'd probably try to give Hobar a hand and pull him up. Okay, so you reach under in into the sewage and try to grasp onto him and pull him up? Yeah. <laughs> yes? That was, that was the yes. question, sorry. Yes. Okay. Um, Hobart, you, you feel... Somebody trying to pull you up. Do you relent and pop up above the sewage line? Are they still biting? Uh, yeah. Then no. Nope. Okay, he resists and stays under the sewage water. Well, this, if that's the case, if I feel the resistance, I'm not going to continue. Okay. So I'll go ahead and end the turn. At least with a hand underwater, just ready to pull him up when he needs to come up. Okay. Lynch, what would you like to do? What would you like to do? Okay. So we've been doing this a little bit wrong. Um, so this is a missile spell. We, we never get. We never get. Um, well, that, and that's why I'm kind of, I was reading through. Um, to cast a missile spell, you take a concentrated maneuver, which I did. At the mm -hmm. end of your turn, roll against your skill with the spell with no distance modifier. Right, because you're casting it. I forgot to do that. I'm terribly sorry. Right. I didn't use code. That's on me, too. Um, now, you can do three things with it at this point. I can make a range attack, hold it, or enlarge it. Yes. 
which we knew about the two. The third is hold. Yes. I can hold this thing ready to attack for as long as I want. Oh, okay. However, I cannot cast another spell while I have this thing going on. Okay. There is one drawback. If I'm injured while holding this spell in my hand, I have to make a will roll. Failure means the missile immediately affects you. Ooh. Okay. So, so go ahead I'm and make, make me a casting roll. roll for that. Okay. 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 Hold on to it. You're holding on to it. Yep. Okay. okay. I've, I've got a 2D fireball. So technically you're concentrating. Yes, I still have that okay. action on you, right? So you can I still you can still off. move. You can still no. step. Oh, you're not concentrating? I don't You're just holding on to it? On I don't have to concentrate anymore. Make sure I got this right. Uh, take. I have to take the con. No, I just have to do the concentrate maneuver to cast it. Once it's cast, which it is, is there as a two D fireball now. Now I'm just holding on to a two D fireball. Okay, so you can now make a regular point, maneuver. Right, I can do whatever the hell I want, but if okay. I get injured, I take the fireball. All right. So what would what maneuver would you like to enact? I'm just. Wait. I'm just gonna wait. Yep. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, okay. there's nothing we can do. It's underneath the water with him, and I'm not exactly going to try and nuke him with a fireball. So, all right. Um, Hobart, you do feel the gnats continue to sting you, but it becomes less and less. But now you need to make a health, blind health roll at a minus six for disease. So minus four. The sewage is seeping into the sting bites and wounds. Damn. I, okay. I can't fix okay. her persephilitis, just so you know. And they cause another point of damage to you. Okay. All right. Over, what I'm do going you wish to, to do? stand up and swirl my hands around on the outside of my armor and try and crush as many of them as I can while they're still wet and gross. You're just like blah, 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 thrashing attack, yeah. Me yeah. like a me like a battle mech thrash attack. Gotcha. Precisely. Okay, that that's fair. Um, okay. boop, 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 boop. The stinging becomes lessens even more and more. Okay. Uh, and that's about all I'm doing. After I stand up, I'm just going to do that. Oh, you are standing up? Yeah. Okay, so you will be in a kneeling position as you see uh, Hobart's head uh, crest above the water line. Oh, you're going to help him up. That's be? right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you can go as to a soon as he stand. was willing, he was able to come up. Yeah, you could assist him in standing up completely. Okay. And that's my turn. All right. You see, um, Corvus sees like sewage, dirty water, um, and like you know, like maybe um. A half a turd sticking out from an un underneath a chink of armor on Hobart. A half a rat turd? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like a severed finger sticking out of his hair. He <laughs> <laughs> runs. <laughs> Fenrir, what you want to do? Uh, now, do we know where the gnats are? Do we know the gnats are in his armor or anything? Yeah, there's still a few clung to him, but they seem to be far less than they were before. I Can I, like, 
the free hand, smack him on the chest, and be like, hey, good thinking. Not thinking of anything else, but kind of... Crushing more cave match. Yeah. Yep, yep, you can definitely do that. It's an automatic hit. Right. And then right. move down behind Corvus. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> nope. I'm sorry. I didn't end it. No, no, no. That's fine. I, I don't want to rob you of your turn. All right. Little kobold <laughs> sitting in the back holding a ball of fire in his hand. Still have bats all over him, man. I mean, that are crawling around or? There's very few left. I think I'll just start poking the ones I see with my stick. How big? Poke, 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 poke. All right. They're, they're, they're still biting and stinging him. I mean, I can't, I, well, I'm not going to cast a fireball on him because while that would be entertaining, it will probably do more damage to him than the gnats. Probably. Ah, he's covered in sewer water. So are yeah, they. He, he smells lovely right now. <laughs> It doesn't bother me. Doesn't bother me either. Are you going to do anything else? <laughs> no, I, I mean, there's nothing else I can do. All right. Um, what's left of the swarm continues to bite you for another point of damage. Well, that's frustrating. And you have to make one more disease check on your health at a minus seven. That would still blind, a blind health check, of course. That's what I thought. Did okay. I pass? I'm not telling you. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm you may have passed. You may have passed. All right. What would you like to do? I'd like to get these goddamn bugs off me, but I don't know what else okay. I can do because I'm not going to hit myself with my axe. I, I Are you just going to pat yourself you down somewhere? Uh, you want to continue to try to crush more? Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to have to keep doing that because I'm assuming my torch probably went out when I went in the sewer. With that, you manage to crush the last bit of uh, active gnats that are stinging you. Thank killing God. them outright. Fuckers did more damage to me than the rats. And with that, gentlemen, if uh, everybody's okay with it, do you mind if we take a quick pee break? Refill yeah, break? I mean, that's fine. All right. All right, guys. In chat, we'll be right back with more Dungeon Fantasy. Stay tuned.
All right, I'm back. We're gonna wait for everybody else to get back. Just, just gonna wait for everybody else to return from their break. <laughs> that entire time, Sin and I were trying to keep from busting out laughing during that whole situation. Oh, I kind of figured. I had to mute myself. <laughs> The first thing that uh -huh. popped in my head was Poo snorkeling with Hobart. <laughs> <laughs> That's about right. And then, you know, my, my odd ass brain went from there, just picturing Hobart just swimming on up through the sewage, trying to keep the gnats off of him. <laughs> Now, this this next part will be Theater of the Mind because I didn't get the battle map taken care of or the explore, the exploration map, I should say. Not so much of a battle map. Um, but I do have the encounters all put together and set up, so that's ready to go. Um, oh, son of a bitch. What? I just realized what? I have a plus two from my conditional modifiers for my rolls for resisting disease and poison mm -hmm. I have another plus five from being a half orc for the same thing no shit okay well then yeah. that changes the fact that you don't have sewer rot because you missed it by one on your last <laughs> roll yeah but I'm sitting there going I, there's gotta be a better way for this but yeah it's, it's plus two to all health rolls to stay conscious avoid death resist disease resist poison but under half orc plus five to all health rolls to resist disease and resist poison. So technically you're a plus seven. Yeah. Jeez. What oh. poo? So you're like, what sewage? <laughs> <laughs> so you really could have just swam on up through the sewage. <laughs> the hunt for red poop tober. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Um... Is everybody back, or are we still missing Sin? Uh, he went. He went AFK right as you got back. No, that's fine. Oh, I, I caught that. I made a oopsie. Not that it really mattered on during the uh, perception check because I have. We're gonna make the, a lot of oopsies. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah, because I forgot this I have is... improved perception and I have the plus two hearing. Yeah, th this is like, Gurf. If you get nail all the rules perfectly. You're way better than Game Master than I have ever been. Um, oh, that being the case, while we're waiting on Sin, I have really awesome news, too. So oh. I have since started working in the background in the shadows. I have since started working on a zombie apocalypse based on real-world Google Maps <laughs> for Savage Worlds for an upcoming oh. campaign game. And we're going to be taking multiple groups for that. So if you were like, I missed out on the GURPS campaign uh, and, and I can't game with the rest of you, um, that opportunity will shrink greatly come next campaign that we're going to be running uh, with our zombie apocalypse. We're going to be running multiple groups in roughly around the same county, same city, same location. So groups will run into each other. So if you're not the active group for the night and you do happen upon another group, but that group instantly becomes either friendly or hostile NPCs. <laughs> now, so if a that mix person of Zomboid is, and Walking Dead? And now, if that person is available th that night that we're gaming, and wants to control their own character during that encounter with the active party, they are more than welcome to. We're, it's it's going to be gonzo, off the hook, zombie apocalypse gaming using Savage Worlds as a base. So, yeah, I've already started on it. I haven't picked a location yet, though. I'm more than willing to take suggestions. It can be anywhere in the world. I'd prefer it centered roughly in the United States because that's probably what we're all most familiar with. Um, but I'm not opposed to, like, say, 
London, UK, or Madrid, Spain, but that would be kind of weird since none of us speak Spanish. So. You, you should totally start it in Louisville just so you're near the project project zomboid area oh. <laughs> Ooh, that's actually a really awesome idea like i said zomboid mixed with walking dead we can call it we can call the campaign <laughs> zomboid project <laughs> you know gotta avoid that copyright can people be turned into zombies yes people can be turned into zombies you will be able to run into zombie variants or mutations you also may be turned into a zombie variant or mutated zombie. All, all the cards are on the table for that one. It's going to be off the wall. We're, we're talking we're, about we're talking people to get and turn into zombies. We're talking about people throwing babies like a football to avoid a zombie horde. You people know what I'm talking about. Saber. What do you mean you people? I mean Saber I mean, as saber. in you people. So, because Saber did that one time. Post it in Nevada? Mm, maybe. Las Vegas. Then you can have Area 51. Spare with spare. the party reroll. You guys have three already, so only one for you. And hello. How's it going, Spare? If you guys aren't familiar with Spare Time, he's another really awesome streamer here on Twitch. Please go give him a like, follow, where, wh wh whatever. I, I'm thinking YouTube. I'm sorry. Please go. F feel free to give him a follow if you would be so kind. And he also does a lot of uh, streaming for charity for anxiety and depression. Um, last scene playing, playing Deep Rock Galactic, which if you don't own a copy of that, I highly suggest you pick up a copy and go play <laughs> with Spare. It looks like a lot of fun. Plus it's dwarves. I mean, dwarves are Plus it's dwarves. You can't go wrong with dwarves. The walking zombie. So I'm zombie. just going to say this outright like anyway, is God bless you, Spare. I mean, the amount that you do for people out there is just uncanny. Dwarves and beer. There you go. There you go. Okay. All right. Are you back, son? Yeah, I'm back. Awesome. All right. The rest of this is going to be kind of theater of the mind. So we are going to hearken you guys all the way back to the world map. Actually, not even, well, I'm going to put you guys on the world map. Everybody else is going to the chat screen. I'll be dipped. Thank you, Ghost Wolf. This spaz brought back into the fold as a filthy casual. Doesn't it feel warm and squishy, Spare? Hey, <laughs> if no one else besides Hobart's filthy. Right now, if yes. Said, if he doesn't feel warm and squishy, just come give me a hug. I guarantee it's squishy. All right. So you guys continue down the corridor. Um, Hobart, your, your um, things are severely painful, but you manage to somewhat shrug them off with the, with, with the occasional wince. As people are like, are you okay? It's like, no, I'm in pain. I mean, they hurt. They hurt a lot. They do hate you. Oh. They brought me back. I know, right? <laughs> um, You oh, guys, I though. Can I, like, try and first aid his wounds a little bit? Can, can you try to what? First aid his wounds? Uh, there, right. There's things they're not bleeding. That in order to clean his wounds, you would have to pop them, which would make him more susceptible to sewer rot. That From a, a medical seven. perspective. Mm, it I would be more like a minus 14. In fact, he would probably just automatically contract sewer rot with exposed wounds.
All right. So you guys can, are continuing east down the sewer line? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. As you guys continue the east down the sewer line, you do see something in the, down that part of the way where you were before, east down the sewer line, that you haven't hadn't seen before. Um, you see um, an etching in the sewer wall. Uh, let's see if I can show it on stream here. Claw marks in a circle. Claws marks. Santa was here. Uh, it appears to be scratched and crudely, uh, a combination of scratches and crudely drawn on the wall in charcoal. Shredder. A two fingered shredder. Mm, oh, no, wrong roll. There we go. Damn, really? All right. Um, further down the line, as your ears pick up, because it's very obvious to hear, flushing through the sewage, you hear... The familiar sounds uh, echoing down the, the, the sewer hallway, uh, similar to the, the noises and sounds and voices that you heard uh, from the cellar before the rat men attacked. And they're getting louder and louder. Can we get like a number? Do we know like how many of them there are? Uh, go ahead and make me a blind intelligence roll. You said that was further down the tunnel with the direction we're heading? Yes. Now, there are small antechambers and alcoves off to the sides of the sewer line, the main sewer line you are going down, so it would be possible okay. to hide if you were pressed to be able to have to do that. Um, you count... Mm, Probably about eight to ten of them. Kill, kill, mine, mine. Kill, kill, okay, mine. Th those are Skaven. You don't want to get a copyright infringement. Um, how many did we take in the first time around? Uh, you took, about you about took on about five. About And one of them was one of those weird crystal mutated rat men. Lynch, can you make magic sounds? Hey, still, Lynch is still holding on to a fireball. I am still holding on to a fireball. Uh, yep, he is. No, yep, he is. no, I cannot make magic sounds. Cor Corvus, can you make magic sounds? Corvus is just going to turn and give kind of like a are you serious look at Hobart. You look like you want to hug. You hug me and I will stab you. <laughs> uh, Fenru make magic sound? The noises are getting louder. I'm going to duck off to the side and hide. Hobart's going to roll. I was kind of thinking the same thing. Uh, those Hope of you that Hobart's are hiding, gonna... please make me a stealth, blind stealth roll. Uh, I believe you get a bonus, Ghost Wolf, because you have a, a cloak that allows you to hide better. Uh... I have the cloak. You could muddy it up and drape it over you. It's big enough. You could drape it over you and somebody else. I'll give you a plus two to your roll. How's that for a stealth check? All right. 
we go. Are, are we even going to get through this without Hobart jumping them? All right. Fuck, I didn't even hit it. This. <laughs> it's okay. I oh, did it's it control. Earlier. Yeah. It was control. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, here, hold on. I will fix that for you. Uh, do you still have the plus two on you? I'm gonna toss the go. fireball into the water and hide it again. as well, Try it again. I guess. Say, like, go ahead and roll it again. Yeah, but hold down control. I sent a plus two to you. Okay. Uh, Hobart, on the other hand, uh, you need. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, you need to make a overconfidence control check. For what? <laughs> is there? Was there a, another? Was there another? What was that? Was, was there another a clove on like the other side of the sewage? Yeah, there's enough to hold everybody. Well, Here the reason I was asking if there was one on the other side is if we're hiding on one side, I was going to toss my torch over to the other side. So, you know, we're not trying to hide with a glowy stick. <laughs> That's work, true. You know. yeah. I already oh, said I was roaring at them, so. Oh, okay. Oh. That's why I was trying to figure out why I was rolling for overconfidence. I've already roared. Then I probably wouldn't have gotten rid of Fireball. I, as soon as he roared, I knew it was going to Because I, I was like, are we even going to get through this without Hobart? Ah! Nope, we're not. No. We're not. Because you said you wanted the things that they had. <sighs> Man, I don't have a battle map set up for this. <laughs> Hold on. They can only come at us like two at a time. It's six feet wide, so it's three hexes. Okay, so three at a time. Well, now I gotta draw a sewer. Thanks. Man. Just, I'm just use just that use that section of the hallway from earlier. Yeah, just use what we had. Hobart is, is following what he was told he we were uh. doing. Actually, that's a good idea. Thank you for, for telling me that. Okay, so we'll we'll just cut we'll off the sewer right. Yeah, we'll Come on, I gotta convert it. Okay, there we go. Beep. And then Besides, disappears into the darkness. Okay, cool. If you guys stay hidden in the alcove and they all come at me, guess who's behind everybody? Well, I would also probably be making that overconfidence roll and standing right next to you, so... Go ahead and make a roll. So, is, uh... I do have a question. The, oh, the sewage no, water... You're good. The sewage water, is it flowing or is it kind of sitting stagnant? It's stagnant. <laughs> okay. I do need to do this. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that that's a big <laughs> no on that one, big buddy. That means I gotta... If this goes badly, guys, right. I apologize. We're going <laughs> to reuse this part of the sewer. The red line's the back wall, or the you can't go any further than that because that's just more sewer. Um, so I got you guys kind of like in the corners and the crevices of the wall. Uh, you roar, okay? I'm like literally making an encounter on the fly here for GURPS. Yeah. Not the brightest thing one can do. <laughs> I love it. Oh, this is kind of rough. Sorry. Uh, let's see here. I need rat people. Where are my rat people? 
Now, is that a log or a gigantic turd sitting in the sewer? Yes. It is a log yeah. of some type. <laughs> oh, let's have fun with this. Let's have fun with this, everybody. Shall we, Chad? <laughs> By the way, I uh, put my axe away and drew the flail. Oh, since I got an open hand, I was going for shurikens. Kadachi in one hand, shuriken in the other. Give them warp stone pistols. Nah, wrong rats, man. Wrong rats. <laughs> <laughs> Those kind of rats, jeez. Uh, I'm looking for one more thing. There we go. This is gonna be tight fight. Okay. Guess I can march them all up here. Out of the gloom of the murky water and the uh, extremely dark, dark passageway that is the sewer line. You see the glint of lots of little red eyes marching up in a, in a very large swarm. The rest of you are well hidden. Hobart, not so much. That's a lot of dice. Uh-huh. Oh, wow, Big Man goes first. actually pretty accurate. Big Man goes first. All right. He said so, eight rats. Uh, yeah, of various types, unfortunately. So you see the two cresting into the torchlight, Hobart? As you see one behind them, shove them to the sides like playthings, and you see a larger than Hobart size rat plow through the crowd of them. Mm, big daddy. Big fucking rat. Big fucking rat. <laughs> like, but I think he's. Yeah, he's size model what fire plus one. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Oh, that, he, that's bigger he, than Hobart. Yes, it is bigger than Hobart. <laughs> As he charges up the up through the sewage past his um, rat mates, there, I guess you could say. But when you said he shot them, did he hit their heads against the wall and hurt them? No. Uh, he targets you, and uh, he is carrying there goes bloodlust. An extremely, he's carrying an extremely large mace as he wildly swings it at you. <laughs> oh yeah, you're bloodlusted right now. Nothing's stopping you. He, he he does connect with you. What would you like to do? Retreating dodge. Okay. As you back up towards the wall. Another rat. Oh no, he's stuck in the back, so he can't move. He's stuck in the back, can't move. Tobert's turn. I don't understand why we're not getting the little turn circle. Mm. Was there an update? No, it was working last combat we did with the Nat Swarm. Hmm. One moment, please. It was working off and on on my end. 
I probably just need to reload, but I can't be bothered to do that right now. I mean, I could re application reload, but then the rest of you'd have to application reload. So we can see at the top whose turn it is, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I have it up there. So you guys out in chat land can see whose turn it is. The little tiny orange arrow under the portrait. Um, I'm going to do a, what the heck here? Wait a minute, what is the, I almost forgot to look. What is the reach on that Mesa is? Oh, it's one. Okay, so I did that right. I was like, he should be able to hit you from the hex next door. And he did, so. Rats, why did it have to be rats? His name is Leroy. Don't make me name him. Damn it, I'm man, going to do you. a rapid strike flurry. May as well just name him dead. Hold on. Or is it Leroy? <laughs> Leroy the giant rat. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go, man okay. dog. I have named the rat. <laughs> So I'm going to do a rapid strike flurry of blows. Oh. And you have the strength to do that. Are you using your axe or your flail? My flail. Ooh, okay. And it's only the flurry of blows turns it into a minus three. But I only have to spend half the FP that anybody else does because of my advantages. Okay. Uh, Leroy here is going to attempt to, he's going to, no, I can't, can I parry with the mace? I can't parry with the mace because I already attacked with it. He's going to dodge. Oh, made it. Mm, attack number two. Yep. It. Going to attempt to dodge again. Oh, my bad. That's no, fine. Made it. Reroll. Are you kidding me? Fine. Rerolling. Missed. Roll for damage. Bear got a got Hober to hit. As Hobert reaches out furiously with his flail and connects with the right leg on on Leroy. Putting him in four points of shock. Holy shit. I'm done. All right, he can't do anything. He's in the back. He can do something. Um, how fast can they move? Can I move an attack? Maybe. Yes. Oh, wow, they are quick. Okay, one, two, three. Or move and attack. As he reaches out and tries to slice you with uh, a sickle. Uh, 
helps if I target you. He hits, but barely. Oh. Dodge. Yep, just made it. Nice. Barely. Just made it. Our next rat going to move and attack. Now they haven't seen the rest of you. They're too busy dealing with the giant half orc sitting in front of them. I'm the giant sewage monster. Two, three, four. He steps in front. And I have to make a intelligence test for this asshole. And he missed it. Okay, so as this rat steps in front of Le Leroy here, Leroy gets exceptionally upset to the fact that somebody else is trying to take his kill. He doesn't know any better. He swats at the rat and slams him into the wall. <laughs> And he takes damage. Um, th that much damage. And you hear this loud squeak emanate from the rat as it face plants into the sewer wall. Hubert's gonna hold his hand up. My rat. The next rat seeing this. Is apparently too dumb to figure out that getting in front of the giant rat is not the He's brightest move in the rat. world. Yeah, I know. One, two, three. And he tries to take now, a swing at you. Leroy would smack him out of the way before he got a swing. The first rat, Leroy didn't see the second one swarm in and the second one hit. Oh no, he missed. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Oh, forgot good. to add the movement attack modifier. Yeah, no, he missed. Never mind. So you're good. Uh, next rat piled dog piles in behind. So he's got a move maneuver. Quarterfest, you are currently shielding yourself against uh, in the alcove against the wall. What would you like to okay. do? Okay. Well, seeing as how I failed my trickster roll, I'm not going to bother with the shuriken. I'm opening up the lantern. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Throwing no. it in the water under the big bastard. Poor oh, Leroy. Boy. Oh, boy. Burnt hair and sewage. Lovely. Okay, hey. now it is only two pints, so we got uh -huh. to extrapolate how many hexes two pints of oil covers. Two pints of oil going up in the water would cover at least five hexes, because it's going to spread five? thin across the top of that water. Mm -hmm. It would take time to spread that far, so it would mm -hmm. it would center on the hex it lands in, and then the next turn it would spread a ring around that hex. Does that sound fair? Sure. Okay. Oh boy, I can't believe I'm doing this. You rat bastard. And that's an understatement. So, uh, <laughs> I, I'm guessing I'm going throwing weapon on this? Yep. Improvised. You're on a minus two, and it is torchlight, so you're a total minus three. On the plus side. Rats have very short legs, which means his nuts are right above the water. <laughs> so torchlight is Leroy's considered low. nuts roasting on an open sewage fire. So here's one of the things I wanted to ask you. So torchlight is low light. Yes. I have low light vision. Oh, then you're not suffering from the, the penalties of, yeah, so that minus one. What do you have low light at, five? Uh, let me look. Because that determines how night, many... Night, 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 yep, night vision five. Okay, so you can ignore five points of darkness penalties. So, so yeah, the only no. person here that doesn't have that is Lynch. 
Yeah, Lynch, for some strange reason, the kobold doesn't have night vision. Spend Maybe too much he's at time in the light you reading books. That might be it. You never know. You know. No, they don't come with it naturally. So, what am I at? Minus two? You're at a minus two to throw. Because you're hucking okay. it in between and over a bunch of rats. Okay. And let's see. Skills. Where is my throw weapon? Okay. So, okay, so you got to do throwing weapons, so it's improvised. What, so just dex? Yeah. Okay. And you want this blind, correct? Yes, sir. You guys are getting so good at this. It's nice. Oh, okay. You, you. You stand up because obviously you don't want to open this thing in the sewer water. You stand up, face the crowd of, of rats, winch this thing loose, and chuck the contents right where Leroy is standing, and it lands perfectly with a bleach as it's, the oil begins to disseminate on the surface of the sewage water. And Corvus is going to go, Lynch, fire! <laughs> Anything else you would like to do? Well, I think that's going to be about all I'm going to be able to do. That would have been, what, uh, attack? Yeah, we'll call it an attack. All right, Fenrir. I'm going to aim at Leroy. You already plus one to hit him. Because he's huge. And you're within minimum range of your bow, so you don't get any penalties. I think if you're as long as you're within like what three, five hexes, you don't get any range penalties with ranged weapons. Well, but there is a now aiming though. Would it take a turn to aim, or is it just yes. if you aim, you get your accuracy, um, the the ACC modifier for your um. Your, your bow, which I believe is, what is the accuracy on a bow here? Plus two for the regular bow. Okay, so every turn that you, uh, so if you took a turn to aim, you would get a plus two. And you then don't I suffer from night, you have night vision, so you don't suffer from darkness penalties. Right. Then I'm thinking I might take a turn to aim. Okay. And that would just be that. So you can't step while you're aiming, but you can't regular move. Well, I'm still concealed. Yes. Yes, you I are. I had the bow out. And I had, and all I'm doing is aiming at Leroy's head. Oh, you're aiming specifically at his head? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um so you're Five. gonna be so you're aiming for his face? Yes. Basically, okay, so you would be at a minus five when you actually shoot, plus the accuracy, so you'd only be at a minus three to hit him. Right. But you would cause considerable more damage. <laughs> right. But I've started at seventeen, so I mean it's almost oh, yeah, impossible no. to miss. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm just telling you the odds at this point. Okay, right. so you're aiming. But that'll okay. be next turn, won't it? Or is it this yeah. turn? No, it'll be next turn. Yeah, right, then Lynch. that's... Um, so you're kind of like hunkered on your cloak, aiming. Fireball. You still have that fireball, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, okay. If I just is Leroy covered in oil now, then no, the water underneath him is uh slicked with oil at this time. Uh, then I will hit the oil in the water then with my fireball. So you're gonna aim for a specific spot, 
Okay, just, so you'd be okay, just the hex. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, you would be in a minus one for one. darkness penalty, no range penalty. Um, yeah, we'll just do it on a minus one. What is that? Innate attack projectile? It's the missile weapon. I'm sorry, Joker. <laughs> You're gonna burn my fucking rat alive. He's already at minus four shock penalty. Jeez. I'm gonna reroll. You're gonna burn a reroll? Missed it by that much. He better. Do we have the smell command back? I don't think so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice hit. Okay, now you're not technically needing to roll for damage because you're targeting the hex. It doesn't have hit points. But now it is on fire. And that was my whole turn, correct? Hey, flip that um, fireball. You look could... a you could still, you can move and throw it. Oh no, because, no, you can move and throw it. So that would be a move attack, but you'd be at a minus, you'd be at a minus four, or you could take a step, but it's gotta be a forward step, obviously. Well, you can't right, step backwards. Wish I had a fire texture I could throw in there. Ooh, actually I can. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I love this program. Okay, now we gotta check to see if Leroy's on fire. Because <laughs> he has fur. Shit. Son of a bitch! Okay, um... Yeah, I, I guess that happened. So he is now burning and squealing like a little tiny rat as the flames lick up his legs and up his body and engulf him. It is also a new round. So, that being the case, he's going to sit in the, fire, in the sewer water and put himself um, out. Well, it just got bigger. Well, the problem so, is, is he's probably taller than the f water is deep, so he would have to lay down. It was just on his balls. As the fire bursts and erupts, as the the oil and the fire just flick out from the, from the central blast radius, hitting everybody else. All right, now. Need to look up how much damage burning does. Because you fuckers got him on fire. Probably just a 1D fire. I would assume so, but I don't want to... Oh yeah, no, it's follow-up damage. Oh, my giddy aunt. <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming it's not a ton of damage, but 1D would make sense. That's what my base fireball is, so... It's not a lot of damage, but it's painful it's not damage. The fire Yeah, it's not the fireball doing the damage. It's the oil slick fire doing all the damage. Uh, let's see here. Flame inflicts burning damage. Uh, so ordinary fire, fire hazards, fire tests, incendiary weapons. Great fire spell, patch a blazing alchemist fire or other hazard described simply as fire inflicts 1d3 minus 1d minus 3 burning damage per turn spent partially in the flames, dashing through some hexes that are on fire, some that aren't, or 1d minus 1 per turn spent entirely in the fire. This is a large area injury. <laughs> okay. Um... So he is on fire, takes three points of damage. 
God damn it, Rev, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I said I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. The other rats, unfortunately. Oh, boy. Take. Okay. He takes one point of damage. He takes one point of damage. And the one slapped up against the wall takes one point of damage. Okay. Um, I need to make an intelligence check for the burning Leroy here. <laughs> to see what his reaction is. Oh, motherfucker. Okay. Grabs another he goes... rat and smacks himself with it. <clears throat> he goes screaming back down the sewer line, not ducking in the water. Two, three, four, five, six. Oh, and let's add insult to injury here. I mean, let's be honest, everybody. He is on fire, so he is basically a giant torch. Uh, I need a nice orange color for him. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> that works. Squeal, squeal, squeal. He's running for his life down the sewer line. <laughs> The good thing for him is this oh shot drops God. off. Yeah, it'll do that automatically. Um, oh, I got to give him the right move maneuver. Yeah, he, he is running away from the source of pain. He is not actively attacking anybody. All right, which leads us to the next rat, which... um, Let's see how smart this one is. Okay, he's not running away, but he's not actively moving towards the fire. He is in a holding pattern, waiting for the fire to go away. The next rat is doing the same thing as his buddy. Obert, it's your turn. What do you want to do? There's a giant fireball rising out of the fucking water, sewage water in front of you. The heat is quite intense. I'm gonna hit the rat that's not in the fire. Uh, which one? Oh, yeah. that one. Yeah, I forgot about him. Uh, Are you gonna I'm, actively I'm gonna try to slug him back into the flames? No, I'm just gonna hit him twice. Really fucking hard. You, fucking you hard. There's another one there. That's true. What? There's another one behind him. Yeah, I'm yeah, not trying to push him into the fire. There's one there. Well, okay, hold on. There's yeah, one Sin there. Yeah, was just saying you couldn't if you wanted to. Oh, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, one I there. I don't need to push him in there. the fire. Just need to be the shit out, out of the him. fatigue point. Oh, jeez. Okay. Poor Leroy. I wish I could help him. Yeah, I know. Hits. Um, there's not much room for him to dodge, so he's just going to do a regular dodge. And he does, does manage to make it. Okay, dodges again. As, as much and as 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 deftly as you swing your um your flail at this this giant walking bipedal rat, he seems to duck and move with unearthly speed, almost like doing a matrix flip off the sewer wall and crashing back down into the sewer sewage water. Fair enough. That is my turn. All right, this next rat. Oh, no. He uh, turns. You can see him through the licking flames. And he bolts. He just bolts.
This one. Good oh boy. Takes a point of damage. And the wall mounted rat is now on fire. <laughs> uh, since he is currently on fire and not thinking with his full mental capacities at this time, yeah, runs like a girl. I shouldn't say that. That's that's demeaning to women. This direction between all of you and tries to leave runs like a rat in a trap there you go this rat oh jeez I hate rolling for fire damage this sucks takes two points of damage and is not strangely enough on fire he moves up here, does a move, and, oh no, he steps, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, and does an attack on the thrower of the oil, as he swings his sickle at you, and hits. Do, 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 do. do you want me to well, private roll this, or public roll my parry? Oh, no, you can public roll it. I don't care. No, combat. I mean, if you can see it, you can see it. Makes it. Nice. Well done. Ah, oh, boy. How much damage do you take? Okay, he takes a point of damage. And... Is currently on fire. Son of, I'm like borking these these burning rolls real, real, real bad. I'm sad about that. I really am. I'm sure you are. Intelligence roll. No, he bolts. Oh, he's already set to move. One. Another burning damage roll. Cheese. Takes three more points of damage. Two, three, four, five, six. All right. Burning Man, you're up. Okay. <laughs> um... You're enjoying this too much. That's good. No, I'm, 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 I'm actually. Glad. No, I mean this is amusing, but I'm. I sent you a video. That's what's got me laughing so hard, <laughs> along with the situation. Well, a horrible video. <laughs> it's an old. Video. See him running from the porch, like some kind of human torch. Okay, I know I can't play any more of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, my God. Oh. oh, I need a drink after that. Holy shit. All right, what are you going to do? I'm going to pull... <coughs> I'm going to pull my Jita out, and I'm going to attack the Kadachi. Oh, okay. Ah... <sighs> Let's see. Do, 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 do. Well, there's a puppy asleep in that bed. Hits. Okay. Uh, he's got <coughs> very li <coughs> little room to dodge. So he can't retreating dodge. But he did make it. So he was more than welcome to dodge back into the fire. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> Okay. I would have laughed if it just instinctually jumped back and went in. <laughs> Fenrir, you have now successfully aimed. What would you like to do? Now, for an aim shot, what do I have to have to hit 
uh, Leroy running away like a little scared. Well, let's see here. You're shooting through a blazing inferno. So that there's got to be a cover penalty for that. We'll call that a minus one. But there's plenty uh, the of blanks, range, so it's a plus one. Well, he has night vision, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> You're also getting a minus four for a ranged attack that far away. Even though your target is well lit. <laughs> um, and you are doing a headshot, so you're going to go accuracy of two, headshots a minus five. So that make it a minus three. So you're looking at a minus seven if you shoot him at that range. Well, that's a ten. I say I'm going to try it. All right, give me a second. <clears throat> so you're at another aim shot. That was going to be minus three. Okay, I'm sending the modifier over. Just you don't need to mess with the modifier bucket. Just make a straight range roll. Make sure you target him first too. Oh, you did. I've already modified your modifier bucket. Oh my god, you hit him. In the back of the head. No ability. In the back of the head. In the back of the head. You have, he has no ability to dodge since he's more concerned about being a flame than he is you shooting him in the back of the head. Uh, go ahead and roll for damage. Just click on the little damage button in the chat log. Oh. Oh, just wait. Okay, so that's a shot to the skull. Which would normally be a times four. Oh, so it's removing the DR and then timesing the wound modifier. So since you did three, he's, his skull is quite thick, so he's got a DR of five. So if you did more than five points, then the, da the excess damage past his damage resistance would be at times four the amount of damage you would cause. You do stick an arrow in the back of his head, but he is completely oblivious to, to the arrow sticking out of the back of his head. Causing, unfortunately, no damage at this time. But you did hit him. And then the only thing I could do is move forward from that point, or? Uh, you can either, yeah, since you didn't take your minus four for moving attack, you can step. So you could step here. That's about it. Or you can rotate in place. I think I'll just stay there then. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Sindari, before you take your turn, I'm going to reload here. Because okay. now I'm getting sticky targets. There we go. Much better. Now I'm seeing the actual circle on the screen. Chat's not, but I can reload that. Not a big deal. Now remember, the flames are going to spread after this turn. Oh, I didn't think there was enough oil to spread beyond that. No, I was talking uh, about like covering five hexes total. Uh, no. Oh, five okay. hexes total. Yeah. Oh, I'll make a roll no. to see if it does yeah. spread and dissipate or if it does. Uh, it'll be a chance roll. Yeah, I, I was telling Ghost Wolf all ago, I was debating how much of a jerk I wanted to be and pointing out that, you know, giant rat taking off running through water is going to cause a wake and drag oil with it. Actually, let me see if I can refresh this for chat. <laughs> Give me a second, chat. You may see some funky stuff here.
There it goes. Hey, it works. Nice. Okay. Continue. I fixed it. Rones of unusual size, Rose. they don't exist. Sure. Did we lose in? Did we lose in? No, I was just waiting. I, yeah, y'all reset? Yeah, no, we're good. I'm sorry. Okay. I so refresh the, I the, the, the cast cast spell. Excuse me? I am casting Shape Fair. Oh. It controls the we, shape of any frame we, and moves it about. Each shape mm -hmm. change requires one second of concentration. Once shaped, the flame keeps that shape without concentration until the spell expires. And you nice. shape that much fire? Moving, moving a flame requires constant concentration. The flame travels at move five on your turn. Uh. A natural fire cannot move to a place where it cannot burn. But flame made from the creative fire spell needs no fuel and can move almost anywhere. Flame shape with this spell normally retains its volume if, quote unquote, spread out across twice its original area, it does half damage. Across three times its original area, one third damage, and so on. Round down in all cases. Can you shape that much fire? Well, I was going, I was going to say, I was only going to do like one square of it so I could like get the oil with it. Does, does it state anything about the amount of fire that you can shape is what I'm asking. Because if it doesn't, no. then you can shape all of it. No. Well, okay. Okay, let me rephrase. It's an area spell, so I would get one hex. Okay, so Unless you would have to pour... You would have to pour Unless more energy that, into it. Right. To get that whole thing would cost me four. Eight. So if you diffuse the fire, it does less damage. What happens if you concentrate the fire? You know? It would burn extremely burn bright and very bright. hot. Flame jet down the sewer. <laughs> Is it, isn't Leroy on fire? Yes. Yes. He's not the only one. Leroy's on fire. This guy's on fire. I should probably make him appropriately flammable at this time. Give me so a second. So you could make Leroy look like Ghost Rider? Uh, he already kind of does, <laughs> to be frankly honest yeah, with but you. But if you, if you concentrate the fire smaller, it does more damage. Right? Um, so like I would say it would probably the fire, double the amount of damage. Yeah. So, like, if all the fire on his body was concentrated on a very small area, that's, like that's a head. lot of rain. So, I don't know if I could hit Leroy. With, uh, yeah, you yeah. wouldn't be able to do that specifically. I'm, no. all, I'm just asking in theoretical here. But all of this fire is sitting here in front of me. <laughs> so, who wants to put stock in more oil? in like you know oil flasks when they get back up topside after this <laughs> i could just see i could just see lynch like carrying around like a bandolier of like oil flasks for a rainy day just in case <laughs> well to be truthfully honest i wanted to when rev threw the oil the last time i was actually well half tempted to say hey I want to shoot that oil flask as well, he threw it. As... How, how long is a combat round? Uh, one one second. second. So here's the funny part about that. I can theoretically do way more damage with this because you want to know the duration for this spell? One minute. Oh, wow. So I am going to spend four mana or four for one of my natural reserve here and three fatigue 
And you remember, you only have yep. Majory 2, so you can only pump two points into it at a time, right? Or am I thinking am missile? I... I'm thinking fireball. Uh, I... I don't know how that works. I mean, just a second. That's fine, take your time. I would assume if, if a spell costs more than your Majory, that it would take multiple turns to accumulate enough power into the spell to be able to be able to actually throw it or in this case shape the fire that the rat is named now because i feel sad for him yeah yeah mad dog named him At this point you know, kind of want to give him the last name Jenkins. Leroy Jenkins. Because he's running away, the, not running the, towards. The flaming rat giant. It's Leroy <laughs> Ratkins. Ratkins, there you go. I think you were going to like hose my giant right, the rat that quickly. I'm like, let's I'm let's like, add a let's... little mix into the in, into the uh, into the encounter. No, no, no. They caught him on fire. Barely. No, I just right. I always have to pay. I just have to pay it. Okay. Well, if we find out differently later, that's fine. We'll just go with what you know. Yeah, it's just a it's a good because it's just a multiplier for the area I'm messing with. Okay. So I need to cast. I'm going to reroll. You're burning a reroll? Yes. Okay. Oh. How do you want to do Why this? <laughs> How would you like to do this? I have control over all of that fire right now. Yep. Now, and you can move it up to okay, five, so, five yards now here's a my turn. It, is it still considered my turn? Yeah. Well, what's the cast time on it? Uh, it uh, doesn't have one. Really? Hold on. Uh, do, 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 shape fire. Shape fire, correct? Yeah. Uh, cost, it says two. Oh, it's one second. Yeah, you can use it this turn. What would you like? And you crit success, so I'll give you the benefit of the doubt on that one. You have complete control over it. You can shape it, you can minimize it, you can extend it, you can move it. What would you like to do? I want to focus it down to a line of three, the, the width of the hall. Line of three, okay. So yeah, like, a, or is it three or four, three? Yeah, so yeah, right, yep. I got what you were going for. Uh, let's see here. I think you just deleted your rats. No, I I didn't. I know there wasn't any rats in there. I gotta make a new template. Give me a second. Oh, it's not giving me a line. Weird. 
I can do ray, rectangle, cone, or circle. Uh, do, do, do. Let's try that. That didn't update it either. Well, that's silly. Nope, that didn't work either. Hmm. Okay, um, I guess we'll just use it differently. So we'll go one, two, three. Is that about I right? Think, I think he was wanting to go north to south. Yeah, north to the bottom. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, 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 that I can do. So there, there, and there. Yes. Now, can can you guys finish off these last two? I don't think so. Okay. Then I'm going to move it to this line here. I'm I'm, I'm making it pretty. Moving it to where? Ping it again. This line here man he never even had a chance all right i gotta make a roll for him too okay he takes that and he is not is on it, fire strangely enough it would be doing more damage too because i concentrated it Oh. Because it went from. Okay, yeah. You don't yeah, he still only takes. He, he still only strangely takes one point of damage, but he does not catch fire. <laughs> He's standing in a wall of fire, though. Yeah, he is standing in a wall of, wall of fire. <laughs> okay. Are you? And I'm going to end my turn. And I'm still kind of, I don't know if I have my sister. Okay, I need to set myself a massive I got you set. All right. Um, I got to see if Leroy is still on fire. Yay! He put himself out. Jeez. He is no longer burning. Uh, the flames on him have, have died off. Um... Making some adjustments here. Um, but I still need to make an intelligence check for him since he's giant and stupid. Hey, look at that. Alright. He turns around, very charred and smoky, and sees the wall of fire and stops. <laughs> As he's discerning, making a tactical decision on what to do next. This guy, on the other hand, is not on fire. Takes three points of damage. Okay and uh, attempts to leap out of the fire and rush Hobart with a move and attack. Move and attack, thank you. Two, three, four. And tries to stab Hobart with a sickle. Missing completely is, you know, he's got singed fur and smoke wisping off of him. Uh, this rat being confronted with a giant wall of fire that just reshaped itself. Um, I'm going to say bolts. <laughs> and that emote actually makes sense. Huh? <laughs> All right, over. Hobart is going to... Did you really just say that's hot? 
David no, Bedford. I didn't. I did not do it. <laughs> Jesus. That is a terrible choice of BFX right now. No, I think that was well, well planned. Well, since I'm in the back arc of this one that's attacking Corvus, I'm going to hit him since he is in my front arc. That would be a flank and... attack. That's not a technically a back attack. Well, I'm in the back arc, is what I'm saying. Not the front three hexes. Yeah, so, rear, yes. No, rear is like directly behind him. You'd be at the flank, so he would only get right. a minus two to dodge. Right, that, that's all I was going for. And I'm, oh, okay. I'm going yeah, no, 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 to just... another fatigue point. Okay. Go ahead. All right. He is going to attempt to dodge an attack from the side. Actually, I'm going to do retreating dodge. Because I can. And, wow, wow. Crit fails. Does that mean you want me to roll damage? Flips on a turd. Uh, that means you Slides critically into hit the fire. him. So, if any damage penetrates damage resistance, treat the hit as a major wound, regardless of the injury inflicted. Yeah, go ahead and roll for damage. Major wound. Let's see what those do. <coughs> a major right. wound is any single injury larger than half of your HP. So, for example, 6 HP or, or more if you have 11 HP or any injury of any size that causes crippling. A major wound requires a health roll to avoid knockdown. Okay, I'm pretty sure you already caused knockdown. Amongst other things, jeez, you hit him square in the back for 10 points. Oh yeah, no, he is, he squeaks his last breath. As you crush his spinal column in through his chest cavity, and he just crumples in half in the opposite direction. Okay. Well, then my second attack will be on this target. Death blow. Hitting a home run with an axe, yeah. No, he's he's hitting him with the flail. Yeah. Uh he is going to retreating dodge. And makes it. Oh okay. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm gonna hang there. Okay, this dodge attempts to, st or this rat is very pissed off and attempts to do a wild attack against you. Um, let's do all out attack double. Yeah. As he stabs and, well, he swings first at you. Getting a critical hit, no defense is possible against that. That's a minus four. He, why would it be a minus four? All out attack double is at a minus four for, oh, that's offhand weapon. Yeah, no, he's using main hand weapon. <clears throat> okay. And actually, I, I, I misspoke when I mentioned the rat that you literally crumpled in half. Uh, gore and sinew spray all over the front of Corvus when you do that. Like his entrails come bursting out of his out of his chest and his stomach and just the eviscerated internal organs of that rat just splatter all over the front of Corvus over here. I kind of look over. I need to was in sewer water. <laughs> uh... All right. Rolling for damage as he swings his sickle at you, cutting you across the chest, doing six points of damage. You must make Ow. a health check versus knockdown. Versus knockdown? 
Yep, he major majorly wounded you. He winded you with that cut. Okay, you're fine. Because uh, you did suffer from a major wound. Um, right. He also... You are at four points of shock. Was that his first attack? Yes, that was his first yeah. attack. All right. He then draws back his sickle and tries to stab it into you. And hits. Oh, bye-bye, Hobart. No! Depends on how hard he hit. No, no, no! You can you can defend against that. Not I didn't critical. Shocked. Yeah, you can. You can do a defense when you're shocked. Yep. Okay. Um, Shock only affects your ability to attack and um, basically attack. All right, we're gonna do a retreating. Oh, I can't I do a retreating block. Suggest. You're well, I'm trying dodge. to figure out because it says I can do a retreating block, but I don't have anything to block with except my flail. Uh, but it's not parrying. Have... Parrying unreadies it. You would have to. You would. The only thing you have to block with is your arm or All leg. Right, so then a retreating dodge because I don't want to take that extra damage. Would you like to burn a reroll? How many do we have left? No, one. we've only got one. If it's a matter of you dying or not, burn it. Dude, it's, I have to roll below a seven. Ooh. Yep. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's like a 50-50. That. That's why I don't want to burn it, because it's, it it's, it's hard roll. It's um, a very, very hard roll. I mean, worst case scenario, you fail it again on a reroll. The party's telling you to re to to burn the rerolls. So. Unless somebody in chat wants to be gracious enough to impart another reroll. I mean, re I can try it, but the... yeah, it's still a seven. That's my lowest. Yep. Otherwise, I'm taking the damage. I can't use parry because I've already attacked this round. Correct. But. Well, so Bear just gave you a reroll. Burn the reroll then. All right. And oh. he missed it by the same amount. Oh. Any more rerolls? Anybody? I'll be all right. I got bonuses to survive. Okay. And okay. We, we've got potions and stuff. I think. Right, right. Ooh, you might come out of this. As he stabs it into your right arm for two points of damage. See, I'm all right. I'm still, you know, here. How many points do you have? One. Hey, you're still up. All right. Bernie Ratty Man over here. Yeah, I'm just gonna... Yeah, he's... He's, he's, yeah. He's just going to go. Making sure I got everybody else here on point. Okay, we're good. Uh, which leads us to... Where is that rat? I have another rat on fire. Oh yeah, no, he leaves. He's far enough away. Which leads us to Corvus. Oh boy, this is gonna get fugly. Recess the sheet down. You see Hobart kind of like falter 
as he takes a wide, as the rat takes a, a wild swing and just rakes him right across his chest armor and cuts deep. Okay, I'm, I, I kind of have a question. Yep, yep. I don't know how, I, I don't want to get too meta into this, but I, I was going to say before, I, I kind of, would. I, I can see Hobart, and I know Corus is behind me. Would I have enough time to warn Corus not to move in front of me? Do not move past me. I want to say, you could say something. Um, um, if I can't, I can't, and I'll change what I do. But I'm gonna let Chat figure, find this find this one out. Chat, do you think uh, Lynn should be able to shout out a warning when it's not his turn? What do you guys think? First come, first serve. First person in chat to, to respond. Because part of me wants to say, yeah, sure. But, you know, chat's kind of like the, the Caesar of, the, uh, of, of all of this. You know what? Unless chat tells me otherwise, I'm going to say, yeah, you can. Okay. I'm just going to, I'm just going to, don't move past me. Still moving fire. Well, okay, well, that's going to change my maneuver. I mean, could you move further? Oh, no, because if you move the flames back, I you would catch him in the movement of the fire. Right. And I would have to recast the spell to reshape it from the line. Let's see. Yep. Do I go through? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just change it to firewall. And now, firewall. Okay. Where is the attack? attack, attack, attack. <clears throat> and chat, we are going a little late because I started late tonight. But if anybody has to go, or if any of the party members need to leave because they have work in the morning or something like that, we will end the session early. So okay. just giving you guys a heads up, if you need to go, just let me know and we'll we'll shut everything down. Okay, got a question for you. Yeah. So I can't remember. So if he's warning me that, get myself back in spot where I was at, turn around. Yep. Can I pull one of the throwing spike shurikens and throw it this round if I don't move? Um, no, because pulling, well, where are your shurikens located? Are they just up in my a pocket sleeve. On, a, on a belt up your sleeve? Okay. I would say yes. Typically a larger weapon, it would require a ready action, but I'm going to say since they're lightweight and you could literally flick your wrist to definitely put them in your hand, I would say yes, you're able to throw them this turn. Okay. I mean, you are part ninja, so. <laughs> All right. That was the whole reason why I went with the throwing spikes instead of the star shurikens was to have them up a sleeve. Okay. Planetary mm -hmm. assault on terror versus whoop. <laughs> That was the new contract that rolled for me today. Oh, really? Yeah. Oof. As you see, you see with the flick of his wrist, he produces a, a glint of metal in his hand, and with a single motion, flicks his wrist again, and you see the shining metal singing through the air at this guy? Yeah, Is I had him targeted. Right? Yes. Oh, okay. He's going to attempt to dodge. And it sinks deep as the spike shuriken finds its place. Roll for damage. Time for this old man to crash. Have fun. You have a good night, Spare. 
Nice. Good hit. As the spiked shuriken buries itself in the groin of the rat man. Are you kidding me? That is so wrong on so many levels. Rat man's got groin. balls. You see him double over as he squeaks in pain. <laughs> well, you hit him. Well. Fast drawing an arrow. All right, you can shoot this turn. Uh, no penalty, no darkness penalty, no range penalty. Yep. It's. He is oh, going with to. With him doing the double strike, oh. he doesn't have. A yeah, he does doesn't it. get a defense. No, he doesn't roll for damage. Yay, another one. As the arrow sings through the air and sinks into his leg. He growls in pain, taking two points of damage. And is now at shock penalty two. Oh, I almost forgot. We have this wonderful modifier effect window I keep forgetting to use. Because on this modifier window, since it doesn't automatically add the shock penalty to your rolls, you can click on that modifier in that window, the modifier window, and you can bring that up. It's right below the measure distance tool on the left-hand side. The little square box with the three dots and the three lines on it. So anything you click on, it will tell you what modifiers that thing has currently. The only thing that is automatically added into checks and things is the reeling thing that's automatically applied to a character. All right, so Fenrir, you have shot and hit, and are you gonna do anything else or are you good? Now, if I move up next to Corvus, Here. am I facing Corvus or would I be facing the other rat man? You can take a step and face any direction, but as long as that step is in the front three hexes. So this is the only hex that's available to you at this time. Right. You take a step. Yep, you can do that. Well, technically you'd be facing that way. <clears throat> All right, anything else? Good. All right, nope. Lynch, you're up. I am going to pull the firewall back to this line here. All right. So Hitting both these through. rats. Yep. So it's got to go through this one and then settling on this It'll one. It'll settle on him. All right. Ooh, what is that? So, so, oh no, yeah. Um, he squeaks his last breath and expires. This other rat, on the other hand, damage, damage, it's five. Um, and I have to roll one more time. And he catches fire. On, I have to put him properly alight. We have to burn the rats accordingly. As is tradition. 
Okay. All right. You have moved the fire. You're still concentrating. You can take a step, but you have so a giant wall fire in front of you, so probably not. <laughs> but much. I am not taking a step. All right. I am done. Leroy, who is not currently on fire. Um, I'm gonna make a move maneuver for him since the fire seems to be retreating. I get rid of him. And that's pretty much all he's gonna do. Obert. Not dead, but close. Yeah. Uh I'm gonna chug a potion. Do you already have it in your hand? On my belt. You have to ready it. Hey. Yep. One second turns. I it's it's trust me Not for time. For the, all the years that I've ever played tabletop games, GURPS weirds me out the most with one second turns in Probably. combat. Probably, yeah, I'm used to like three second turns or five second turns. Yeah, so, so maybe you can you take should, a ready um, maneuver to do that. Step back and ready it. Yeah, you can. I, I believe kinda. you can. You can half move and ready. I was just going to take one step No, back. you can take, yeah, you can take a step and ready. But you can only step. Oh, yeah, no, you can do that. That's fine. So you yank the potion out of your belt as you yeah. step back away from the wall of fire. Yeah. That's about all you can do. Okay. Oh, Mr. Flaney. Lovely. All right. I'm pretty sure he's going to die this turn. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. As he burns to death in the flames. So that's his turn. I'd say move to fire on the backside of Leroy. Make him come in. <laughs> uh, we better keep the fire between us and just pepper him from the other side of it. That's possible. Yeah, how much range do those have anyway? 511. Two, so you can do full damage up to five axes. So right where Leroy's at. Yes. You do half damage between six and eleven hexes. I'm guessing I'm at a minus one from the fire. Uh yeah. Fire kinda acts as a light cover. Wait a minute, do you have range penalty on that? You're also at a minus two for the range to target. Yeah, it's, I was trying to understand how that works. This is range 511. So, um, the only thing that range does for the weapon, for each individual weapon, the only thing that affects is how much damage you cause. So... At the up to the amount of yards on the first number is full damage. Anything past that, up to <laughs> excuse me, up to the second number is half damage. Otherwise, your penalties for range is universal, no matter what weapon you're using. But you, your weapon only fires up to eleven hexes. Do you only get the penalty up to 11 hexes? 11 right. is your max. 
For example, for Fenrir's bow, on the other hand, he can fire that thing um, up to 165 hexes at full damage. But it's 165 yards of range penalty. Okay. So the range penalty affects him equally as it affects you. Okay, so how how do you figure the range penalty would be my next question. Uh, if you click on the measure distance tool and you left click and hold from you to Leroy, it'll okay. automatically gotcha. update your thing, your modifier bucket. All right. So that's how you do range. Oh, wrong thing. No, that's fine. Oop. Just make sure you got that range penalty in your bucket. <laughs> Are you okay? It's. He is going to attempt to dodge. And he dodges. So the shuriken sails past them and sticks in the wall behind him onto the side of the sewer. <laughs> A big flesh wound. <laughs> now, can I knock an arrow and aim in the same turn? Or do I need to quick draw the arrow and you then You need aim? a quick draw, yeah. Made it. And you then can I'm gonna then aim. Knock an arrow. Oh, you're gonna aim? Yeah. All right. Well, that's why I was asking, because I mean, it's... In ultimate reality, I mean, it would be quick draw and aim. It, pretty much Leroy at that point. Hmm. Yeah, you're more than welcome to shoot at him. Uh don't forget though, you're gonna be you're gonna be at a minus two, minus three for the flames. I'll send that over to you and you can just make a straight shot roll. There you go. And roll to shoot. He'll hit. Damn it, my shit keeps sticking. There we go. He's going to attempt to dodge. And ooh, missed it by that much. Go ahead and roll the, for damage. Ooh. Ooh. Why can't I? It's oh. acting weird on my end, too. Yeah, it's because he's not. He didn't target him. Oh. Go ahead and target him and just roll for damage again, and I'll add the excess points. So you did eight points. Okay. So I'll just add two. As you peg him in the right arm... The, the arrow goes straight through his arm, causing five points of damage. Yeah, my shit's sticking. It's weird. It's being all sticky. And not in a good way. All right. Uh, he is at shock four. That yeah, I'm having to, like, just... reload. I'm not going to like this, then. So I can move this thing five, right? Yes. Yeah. One, two, three, four. You're going to move it through him? Five. Oh, so you're going to move it through twice. him and come back. Oh. All right. That you can do. And he does have to make an on fire check. Okay, so I gotta roll what? 4d6? Jeez.
So that's going to be at a minus four. So that's six, nine, 13. Yeah. Leroy is dead. Bishop coming in with the raid. You missed the burning, the 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 giant burning rat, Bishop. <laughs> And some excellent tactical gameplay by the party. All right, you can you can chug that potion now if you really want to. I I do. Okay. Is it a left or don't right? right? Don't use the potion. Don't use the potion. Don't use the potion. You, no, use well. I have healing pulse. We have healing pulses, right? Oh, that's right. You that's do. But that's for injuries, I thought. They do the same amount of healing. But and yeah, stop bleeding. Pulses, pulses as you have to like apply the potions you can just drink. Yeah, but don't pulse this is uh, stop bleeding. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, it's up to you. Well, what I was going to say well, is, what say is. We had discussed a, a number of weeks ago that we were doing healing wrong. Oh, that was quite a while ago. I don't remember. Right. So I'm trying to make sure I do this correct. Okay. Do I do a potion plus my extra or my increased health? Or does my healing not affect when I use a potion? Mm, I'm gonna find out I have here. rapid healing. Recovery is normally automatic once duration ends. Oh, you have rapid healing? Yeah. So here's what you have to do with potion or with the the pulse assist. In battle, healing normally means a healing spell or potion. But it's a fantasy tradition to hastily stuff a bandage into an ally's wound. The medic must make a concentrate maneuver, be with one in within one hex of the patient, have one hand free, and have bandages or first aid or healer's kit ready in the other hand. The attempt requires a first aid or esoteric medicine roll at plus one for a proper kit, but minus ten for haste. Success heals one d one. 1d minus 3 hit points minimum, minimum 1 hit point, critical success rolls, seals 3. So, all right, so yeah, my rapid healing only work. works for health rolls. Yeah, right. so that's, so that's, it's only, that's natural recovery. Yeah, this right. is natural It's only when recovery. I get very rapid healing that it works by potion. Yes. All right. So it's just going to be the 1d6 then. It would be the 1d6. Now, you can make a rapid healing roll if you want at that plus five. But the most it'll do is it'll give you one extra hit point on top of whatever the pulse this heals. And with first aid health, I believe it adds on more or first aid just stops. Staunch is bleeding, if I'm not mistaken. Kind of so thing. many rules. I know, right? I know, right? When Ed the Barbarian is facing down in his own blood and you need to get a natural recovery for stage spell potion. Or casting magic. Or casting magic. So from now on, you know, since the book says it, I'm pouring all of my healing potions in your ear. <laughs> all right, well, um, I'm going to use a potion. If Monday wound binding takes effect. 30 minutes, requires a first aid roll. This specific skill gets a plus one first aid healer's kit. Success restores 1d3 minus 3 HP. So you if if you had Lynch apply the polstice using first aid, you would get not only the healing prop magical properties of the polstice, 
but you would also get a 1D3, 1D minus three HP from Lynch's first aid. And if you wanted to, you could make a rapid heat, you can make a natural recovery test at a plus five because you have rapid healing. If you make that eight, that health test, you can also add an extra plus one on top of that. Well, let's do that then. And if I'm still pretty low, I'll use a potion. Uh, okay. What is uh, Lynch's first aid at? Uh, I don't know. 13. All right. Yeah, you got a higher one than I got even. So. But in order, it's he's you're not using a band. Lynch won't be using a bandage. He'll be using the pulse as, as a bandage. So it'll right. add on to what the bandage heals or the pulstice heals. Well, I have both. Which one's better? So technically, it would be 2D minus 3 if you make if your first you aid make... check. Okay. I'm going to try to make a first aid check. Yeah, go ahead and make a first aid check. Fuck it. Whoa. Well, uh, hello. hello. Second one I got tonight. Here. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna max that, that roll. So it normally it's a one d three minus three. It is a six minus three, so it heals three points plus whatever the pulse this heals. It just he he maxes out the the roll automatically. Okay. So roll I, a d six. Information on the pulse It's a, for the it, pulse it, so. it heals just like a healing potion, except it. Um, um, it's used so like just bleeding. Okay. So just you want like me to roll, or you want Lynch to roll? Um, either way. Go ahead. Oh, look at that! Howler gave you a re-roll for it. Thanks, Tyler. Oh, you want to re-roll that? Uh, <laughs> do I need? Do I need two? Well, two of them, or one of them, or are we maxing the roll because it was a critical success? I don't know what we're doing right now. Uh, the critical success maxed out the first roll, so it would just be a D6. But like I said, Howler gave you a re-roll for that if you really wanted to use it. And he said, live, motherfucker, live. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, will, I will use Howler's re-roll on that then. I got a 50, 50 chance of getting better. Go for it. It's going to roll one, but it's... 50-50. Whoops. Oh, I like shit. the five. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh! A six. I'll take a six. Five. Okay, so that's nine points. Now make a very rapid natural recovery healing at a plus five. So it's a health plus five. Made it. Okay, so you heal 11 points of damage. I'll take you see, As you see, Lynch saunter over through the sewage. And he's just like... Yeah, like his... All better. He's like, you're better now. Go forth. <laughs> nice. That was almost a complete heal. I know, like I'm right? I'm down two points now. Hey, what can I say? Your party members do good work. I don't disagree. <laughs> All right. With that, uh, we can continue or we can end it right here. It's up to you guys. Uh, if we continue, there's probably about another 20 minutes of content I got to throw at you. I can keep going. I do need to use the restroom. Though. You want to take a little quick five minute break? Sure. I, I'm good with that if everybody else is still ready to go. I, I mean, I'm good. I'm good. We don't have to take a break if, unless you don't want to. If you guys just want to keep me moving along with you guys, if you're doing traveling, then that's cool too. But I do need to okay. that would be right now. All right. That's fair. Can we scavenge or scrounge or search anything that was dropped maybe from um, any of the dead? There is a extremely rusty poo covered large mace uh, that is worthless uh, from Leroy um, because the haft is burned to cinders. 
uh, amongst a bunch of other rusty sickles that are uh, the uh, the handles have been burned away. I was just gonna go recover my throwing shurikens. That you can do. They're probably stuck in the wall. You threw them with an Im immense amount of force, or yes, sticking out of the groin of a rat. Yes, one in a wall, one in a rat. Well, you know, rat. Same thing. And I'd pick up whatever arrows I could that were left over. I mean, I know I couldn't get the one from the acid, but. All right, <clears throat> now that you've encountered this patrol, you have a couple of options at this point. You can keep going forward or you can go back. Oh, and that fire is probably dissipated by now. So there was nothing on any of the rats that indicated nope. they were allowed safe passage through that area? There was nothing on those rats. So, you guys want to go back and get some more oil? <laughs> Which I should probably recover by later from the water. I don't know. I I kind of want to go down that hole. It's up to you all. I'm good with either. I just, I, I hate continually going back to the inn every time we need something. Now remember, you're going to be going into this, this part of the sewers completely blind. You have no map, you have no indicator, you have nothing. I mean, short of like somebody having the navigation skill, but that's going to be at a severe penalty because you're wandering around in with torches in sewers. And well, if you spend any more time down here in the sewage water, you will eventually gain sewer rot, even with without having to roll. So right, I'm no, just, I, I understand Giving it that. to you straight I'm, I'm right thinking, now. Yeah, we should probably at least get out of the water for a little while. Well, we know where the hallway we're going down leads, and we've already <laughs> seen that portion of the map. And with Lynch, who has photographic memory or whatever the hell it's called. Identic you know, memory. Yeah, that. Uh, so the map's going to be exposed for him. Um, the well, only you would have you... to find a map. Right, well, you... I'm saying he knows where we're going, or he's he's he remembers everything we've seen so far. Yeah, but he hasn't he hasn't been down this part of the sewer line. I think he's talking about he knows where the we're going as far as what we've seen so far. Oh yeah, the yeah. Ball. The evil temple, the dugout cavern, right. the 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 library, blah 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. Right. There might be further so clues down down, down that direction. You never know. Or there might be clues further down the sewer line. I say we just keep moving down the sewer line for now. Um, if I mean it, it's a simple trek back when we're done. So. There's got to be something. They're, they can't keep having giant rats spawn from this direction without something creating. Do, 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 do. Okay. <laughs> You're the meat shield. I'll follow. I'm going to go pick my torch back up that I threw into the other cloak. Alcove or however the heck you say it. All right. So you guys continue traversing further down. Um, the sewer line. And after a couple of hours and, you know, you know, you come to a T junction, you come to four way junctions, you come to spillways. You don't run into any more Ratman patrols or anything really that would just outright try to harm you, but you ex you don't know exactly where you're going either. You kind of become lost. Uh, 
unless somebody has navigation. Eidetic memory, yes, can help, but only so far. You could backtrack, but finding anything of use or that could give you more information about what's going on down here uh, doesn't seem to be presenting itself at this time. Yeah, you are completely lost. Short of being able to backtrack with Lynch's direction. I mean, if the only option we have is going down the rainbow hallway. The only thing that's... Don't... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, we, we don't have any indication from anybody other than the innkeep that, hey, there's, there's rat people down there. Take care of the shit. Um, the only thing that you do are able to discern from your current location is occasionally you come under, you see a, like a, a beam of moonlight shining through a grate in the ceiling that indicates that it's the middle of the night currently. Being as it's uh, currently springside uh, and the moon is very present in the sky, it occasionally gives you shafts of moonlight every so often as sewer grates present themselves in the roof lining of the sewer. But that's it. You can just pretty much tell what time of the night it is. And it's probably close to 11 o'clock midnight at this point. Well, do you guys want to take a break and go rest? Or what do you want to do? You oh, could easily find an alcove that is out of the muck. But that's not going to secure you from possibly other residents of the sewers finding you? Well, my thinking would be to climb up through one of the grates and go back to the inn and take a freaking bath. That would be a possibility. Um, if I mean, you could, but uh, like I said, you wouldn't know exactly where you were, and you're not familiar with this town. You would have to ask somebody for directions back to the inn. Which is easy enough. I mean, I'm sure there's guards patrolling at night. Oh, yeah. I mean, and it's an it's extremely large human city, human-centric yeah. city. Saren is... A massive though. I mean, probably anywhere between six to twelve miles from end to end. And that's not including the the like the the Bastille. Um there's there's countless other points of interest around the city of Saren. So it sounds like Hobart's asking a question. Do we go back to the rainbow hallway or do we go rest for the night and clean up? I think we need to get cleaned up and rest before we end up getting sick from this crap. Did we find anything on the bodies to get us through no. that? Just rusted, burned um, weaponry. No armor, no gems, no gold, no copper, nothing. Well, shit. A very muscular and charred Leroy, but that's about it. Uh, we should probably bring back some proof of these things then. What? Cut off Leroy's head? <laughs> sure. All right. All so right. yeah, let's do that. Then. Do the honors. We'll we'll take Leroy's head and go back to the inn. Do you, uh does Ghost Wolf does Fenrir have any kind of taxidermy skill or anything from his time out in the wild? Uh well, I don't know if it it didn't I didn't have any that I was able to pick up. I didn't know that there were any. No, that's fine. I was just curious if you had something similar. 
Dude, basically, well, you guys just be roughly sure that decapitate I... the charred rat ogre. Right. I'm sure I'd yeah, be I'm able sure. to do I'm something gonna... with it anyway. Okay. Obviously, you're not going to be able to skin any of these rats as they're all charred to a crisp. I don't know if I'd really want to try to skin them down in the sewer. Yeah, that would be kind of nasty. <laughs> so just take a head off. The big well, one. I t yeah, Leroy's head was the that or maybe and maybe the tail, but yeah, rat tails and they would weigh less than the heads. And is it can it be considerably larger than the other one? Yes. I say we get rat tails from all of them. And they, I mean, these are quite, these are large prehensile tails. I mean, they probably measure a good three, four feet long. I'm going to say three feet long. Fair enough. Well, Just I'd say for size. my, on my behalf of it, I'd say that we would at least want Leroy's head and tail. Okay. That's her. We can tie the rest together on like a scourge. I mean, you could easily produce a bag and just shove all that stuff in there, and then just... I'm pretty sure Cobert would have no problem hoist, hoifting that over his shoulder as you guys made yourself made your way up to the street level through the grating. <clears throat> so, with that in mind, you harvest the parts off the, rat, off the dead corpses floating in the water um, before... You made your way down the sewer line. Um, you managed to find a sewer grate after, like, you know, you're huffing and puffing. Um, it's It's been a long evening. Uh, you all, I would m normally dock you fatigue at this point, but you're just going to gain it back once you get back to the inn anyway. So you guys make your way with a great amount of effort through one of the ceiling grates in the sewer. And you pop out onto a cobblestone street, completely, you know, barren of people. There's not a soul around. You do see the flicker of lantern lights off in the distance, up and down the avenue that you're currently popped out of. Um, you do also manage to see, off the corner of your eye, there's a couple of um, what appear to be human guards in there in livery um standing in front of a building they seem to be you don't know if they're on duty but they're casually leaning up against a post off to the side of the avenue just gently talking back and forth to each other as you guys emerge like newborn shit covered babies out of a hole in the ground They don't seem to have noticed you um, yet, since it's the middle of the night. I'm gonna walk right up to him. <laughs> hey, hey, do I stink? Hey. So hope. Uh, so Lynch saunters up to one of the guards and, yeah. So I told her, "What is Not that like awful shit. stench?" Uh, I've actually got a roll I need to make that I didn't even think about. Uh, Finner sure. probably ought to be rolling it too. Uh, yeah, rats in your sewers. Uh, it'd probably be no. We have a cute sense of smell too. Oh, oh yeah. So we probably need to be rolling what health minus two. Yep. Okay, you're fine. Uh, where do you get to uh, minus two at again? Because instead of it being an, an advantage... No, no, no. It's being uh, figuring... Uh, there it is. Yeah, just hover over where it says plus zero at the bottom, and it'll come up modifiers. Then you just select the oh, minus okay. two in the bottom right-hand corner. It'll add, you, add it to the bucket and then make your health roll. 
Oh, minus two, not plus two. Minus Which also two. reminds me, are you guys sauntering up behind where Lynch is heading towards the guards? I'm probably sitting where we came out. Oh, I, oh my God. Because not only do I have <laughs> all that sewage on me, remember, I got covered in rat gore. Ah. As, as, as Lynch saunters off towards the guards, Fenrir's the last one out of the sewer, sewer grate, and he kind of huffs and he puffs, and he's on his hands and knees as he just projectile vomits onto the street cobblestone. <laughs> you, you got rats in your sewers. What? What? Oh my god, you smell like the underside of a fucking dung beetle's anus. Rats in your sewers. Where is that where you came from, little guy? Do you understand English? Oh, God. Oh, you me. And I walk back to the group. <laughs> okay. And I show, and I show Yeah, and just about the time you get back, you see, you see Fenrir just vomit all over the cobblestone. <laughs> Just upends the contents of his stomach. That stew was better going down than it was coming up. Oh, yeah, it was. Oh, God, don't talk about food. <laughs> <laughs> well, Corvus, make another health roll. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah. They actually followed me. Uh, I'll tell you in just a minute. Okay, you're still holding on, but you're like burping. You're like choking back a, a, your throw up. You're like, oh, God, no, no. One of the guards cuts off and he's like, wait, hold on a minute. Oh, I've got to see this. And he walks over to the, your band of adventurers sprawled out and covered in shit on the, the avenue corner. Where the hell did you all come from? The beggars now is hanging out in the sewers. Not beggars. We got sent down to clear out a problem. There's giant rats down there. And I don't Whoa, mean what? like they're just like a little bit bigger. We're talking like people sized rats. And he, and he, he point to the head. snaps and whistles <laughs> over to the other guard and he comes over. We got a bunch of sewer clowns come out tonight. Nope. Oh. Cor Guess Corvus we better gonna, go back to work. Corvus is going to point over towards the head and the tail. Look, it, watch your nose, though. God, it stinks. Yeah, those are pretty little trinkets. I suggest that all of you cool your heels in the jail tonight. Yes. And he whips out some shackles from behind his back. I rolled another health check and see if I continue vomiting. Sure. Actually, you can just... Actually, no. You just keep throwing up. Good. Then I'm yeah. aiming at their feet. Oh, fuck me. Do you really want the smell all the way back in your jail? Uh, He's goodness. right. Um, hold on. Wrong roll. Because I have a feeling it's going to take... I mean, days just to get this freaking smell off of me. Ooh. Hold on. <laughs> Give me a second. I gotta look this up. I kind of look at the guard. What's the other guard doing? Getting vomit on. Uh, do you have any reaction modifiers, um, Corvus? Yep, yep. <laughs> minus two, minus minority. Two. Minus two, plus the minus four for smelling like sewage. Okay, so that's a total of minus six. They're, like, can, they're like, you know so what? I don't get paid enough positive. for this. <laughs> but if I come back here, you all better be gone. Otherwise, I'm going to stick you in the back of the jail and we'll deal with you in the morning. 
He probably still smell us from back there with the shit on us. And his friend's like, hey, what, well, hold on a minute. They're breaking the law. They're coming out of the sewer. They smell, they're fouling up. It's like, no, no, I don't want to deal with it. Let's just go. But he turns around and he points a stern finger at Lynch's face and he's like, but if I come back and, oh God, and I fought you here, you're in deep trouble. You understand me? Okay, just a second. Where the hand is? I'm I'm gonna have to make a couple rolls here. Oh shit! Okay, you know you're fine. <laughs> We're not done. Oh god. Okay, no, you're still good. You're not overconfident, and you're not socially inept at this time. <laughs> uh, I love this campaign already. Where might I ask? Is your 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 boss, your prison, where where, where you people hang out? It's like over in the um, what would it be called? Um. The royal, uh, God, I haven't even made a map of the damn city. It'd be the uh, royal section of the city. That's where their main headquarters is located. That's where they would probably you know put, dump you in the jail. Do you have smaller little places? Yeah, they call the them stocks. I start walking away. I start walking back towards the end. Are all, are all guards this dumb? Mm hmm. Usually. You say you start walking with people. back towards the end. We don't know where the end is. Well, let's see here. You're not a dwarf. You're not, an, you're not a human. <clears throat> I, I can, One of you I looks like a fucking orc. That's, that's a. I'm staying in character. I know one of you looks like a fucking orc. That's leagues bad in your favor. So, so oh yeah, I, I get it. I don't have to like it. I get it. You might as well be like below the poor people and the lepers at this point. Not to mention the fact you smell like sewer shit. So it, it's not going great for having a positive reaction from the cards. What's the name of our inn? Uh, there is no name. I haven't given it a name. Um, yeah, we just the that. inn uh, is fine. Oh, did we? Did we take notes? Or I didn't take a note. note you did give it a name, though, I think. You well, did for, for, for the purposes of for, for now, it, the inn is fine. So, you asking them for directions? Yes. They're like, they give you rough directions on how to get back to that section of the city. It's about a good. It's about a good thirty minute walk. After getting directions, I'm going to hold my hand out and thank them while waiting for a handshake. They're like pike off, half breed, and they turn around and walk off. Yep. Have a nice night. Oh, oh God. <laughs> And about that moment, at the perfect timing, as the guards turn around and walk off, you hear the sound of Fenrir once again for the third time upending what's left of the contents of his stomach onto the cobblestone again. <laughs> oh God! Man, they should have had to walk carefully away from me. Yeah, I, you're like I think I'm empty. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, no, Corvus, it's like, no, stop throwing up, I can't, oh god. Do you guys manage to get to your feet? Benru stops vomiting profusely. You know, wipes off his mouth. No, it, no, it, not wipe it off the mouth, because I'm not putting my arm to my mouth. <laughs> hey, Fenrir, you want some more stew? <laughs> 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 it's just a dry heave at this point. <laughs> oh, 
All right. So you guys get up, <laughs> gather what what belongings you have, and make it back to the inn. You open up the door, and as you all guys, all of you guys, um, walk into the main room of the uh, the inn. Lee comes out from from behind the counter from her from her room in the back, bleary eyed, you know. Wearing a night shirt, holding a lantern to be like, we're close. Oh. Before we you... step in, can you bring us oh some water my to wash God. off? God. Yeah. You have been can... in this. Sir. Oh, dear Lord. Uh, no, no, not in here. Out. Everybody That's... out. As I said, before I step in, please bring me some water to clean this we... off. We. I will. There's a trough outside where the horses are, and there's there's rain barrels. Go clean yourself up before you come back. Rain barrels. I'm not fouling the horse trough. I wasn't gonna get near a horse. <laughs> trying to look at Hobart. What are they talking about? I don't know. I don't smell it. Just just be glad you don't have a sensitive nose, like we do. So you guys make your smells, way outside. Just smells like the dishes we played in when I was growing up. And and after a while, um, the the sun or the the moon starts to slowly wane past the middle of the sky. The moonlight casting more than enough uh, enough light for you guys to see in the dark. Also, on top of with your night vision, even Lynch can see pretty well. You guys managed to rinse yourself off fairly well. Still pretty stinky, unless you like launder your armor, your clothing, and possibly take a bath. But you've gotten to the point where it's just an annoying smell that you're emanating at this time. Lynch and Hobart can't even tell the difference at this point. You guys can still smell it, uh, Corvus and Fenrir, on your persons. Uh, as there's still chunks of sewage embedded deep into your, uh, like the fur of your tail. I was thinking the same thing, Rev. Like, <laughs> let try to clean up his clothes off. Yeah, uh, they they would have to be properly laundered, like run through a wash basin in order to get the rest of the stink out with soap. Yeah, but trying to get as much of it off so he's not handing something that's smelling as foul to somebody cleaning it. That's fair. He's got some courtesy. About an hour later, you guys finish cleaning yourselves off and you make your way back into the inn. And Lee already has, like, food set out. Like, um, chunks of bread, um... Uh, mugs of ale and bowls of stew set out for you. Nice hot stew. She's like, I figured you were hungry when you got back, seeing as it's the middle of the night. Uh, hold that thought. I really need to clean my tails out before I just lose there's, my shit. There's a bath basin up in the bathroom. You guys can go use that before you head to bed. I'm assuming you're tired. And you... I don't know what you guys are going to do. I'm going back to sleep. It's the middle of the night. I have a lot of things to do in the morning. I don't blame you. But did you find anything before I head off? I was going to no. say something about the bread, the power, head, tails, and red head. You just kind of dump it out of the sack onto the table. Oh, did you all clean no, it you gotta hold there? the rat head on the arrow. The you rat right, head found, on the arrow. We found this. You'd like unceremoniously pull out the rat ogre's head. <laughs> oh, God. Holding it with the arrow, by the arrow. You found that? We guards. Guards. Your guards are idiots, though. Why is he hard? Corvus walking off to the bathroom. I up myself. Wizard! <laughs> you burned him a lot. You know what? I don't want to know. I don't know. It's too late. You know what? We'll talk about it in the morning. 
place the sack in the corner. I'll add it to your to your total. Try to go get some sleep. I'm going to do the same, okay? And with that, she like immediately turns on her heel and staunchly walks back behind the counter to her room. Hobart's going to scarf down dinner and then go to his room. And with that, we'll end the session with the camera panning on a bunch of bubbles popping in the air, the air filled with steam, and a relaxed sigh echoing out of Corvus's mouth as he sinks under the soapy suds and water of a giant copper wash basin. Does everybody have a wash basin? There's there's only one. It's in the bathroom. So everybody has to take turns using it. Unless Lynch wants to hop in there. With it. Well, I mean... Hang on. Go Why ahead and make me a socially inept check. Why am I just... <laughs> Why am I just picturing the kobold running and cannonballing into the bathroom? You know what? No, I mean, it says what? just made it, but I'm going to say that there was a modifier to that, especially with how tired you are. So you don't cannonball in there, but Corvus, you hear the door creak open to the bathroom and you see a shadow <laughs> in the steam, a little tiny short statured shadow walk by. You know it's it's Lynch. Okay. He gets a foot over on the edge of the tub. Ooh, Corvus gonna be like, this isn't exactly big enough to be a public bath, Lynch. He's like, that's okay. Uh, oh, we're both guys. <laughs> Don't care. And he disrobes and just kind of dips a, a little tiny clawed toe into the water. Oh, ah, oh, hot. And he just slowly sinks into the bath opposite you on the other side of the tub. Corvus is just done at this point. He's like, fine, whatever. As, as that happens, you hear some familiar voice. As the door opens, creaks open once again. Now, linens are on the... Oh, I... It's Lee... I, I I didn't mean to interrupt. I, I, I'm so sorry. You're not interrupting anything. I don't know. He's odd. The the linens are in the closet across the hall in case you need towels. I I'm gonna go. What, you I'm go. what are you guys talking about? <laughs> All she right, thank you. Immediately wow. shuts the door and you hear the creaking stairs as she goes back downstairs. <laughs> That was going to be awkward because I was about to say that Corvus was about to get out of the tub. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. I th I think we'll end it there for now, though. Uh, we didn't even get to the part I hadn't finished yet. This is wonderful. I have two more weeks to work on it. <laughs> nice. So. Well, thank you guys for the game tonight. Um, sorry we got started late. That's my fault. Um, oh, good. As we finish out episode five of our Dungeon Fantasy campaign. Yes, more fire. Have a good night, Ethereal. Um, and we will pick this back up in two weeks on the 25th of, no, the 24th of February will be our next session for episode six. Uh, next Friday, we will continue our playthrough on Seven Days to Die with the Darkness Falls mod. And as always, on Saturdays, Saturday, tomorrow night, more Mega Mech action. Um, I got, we got a lot of irons in the fire coming up. Um, I'm sorry about the tournament being put, pushed off till later, uh, for the Mega Mech tournament. But a lot of things have come up, and then I got sick, and blah, blah, blah. It's just... 
it's been crazy around here lately. Work's been been driving me nuts, and then me and Kemi came down with this cold. So, but I'm working on it. And also, our upcoming zombie apocalypse campaign, um, using Savage Worlds. We're gonna be checking that out after after the Dungeon Fantasy cam campaign has concluded. I don't know when that's gonna be. It could be next winter. We've got a lot of content we can do on this. There, yeah, let, let me give, give chat an idea of what I'm talking about here. This is the world map. This is the city of Saren. This is all they've seen up to this point. Eh, let me just zoom out here. Your screen's not changing, bro. That's because he's not going to show us the whole map, but he's giving an idea of the scope. That's how small Saren is in accordance to the world map, and I can't even get the entire world map zoomed all the way out on the screen. Yeah. So, a lot of content to go through. Um, fair warning, work has potentially sent me on a job uh, that week that we're supposed to get back into it again. Okay. Uh, out of town all week long, so I may or may not be traveling home during this time. Okay, well, we'll play it by ear, and if... Just letting you know. We'll just postpone it, if need be, like we have before. So... I might run a zombie apocalypse game when we're not running Dungeon Fantasy. That actually sounds like a wonderful idea, because anybody can join in on that. Or have a light combat interlude. Instead of a look giant rat ogre that I have to set on fire, you know it's good. It's Dungeon Fantasy. Nothing is a light combat interlude in this game. It's either I almost die or I slaughter everything in like oily fire. You know, it, it, there, there's no happy middle ground in this in this campaign so far. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Oh yeah, it was fun. So. Um, uh, as always, I award experience at the end of an arc, an adventure. So you guys don't get any XP for tonight, but yeah, I have a feeling you'll get some XP either next session or the session after that. That uh, going at the pace we're going at right now, I have a feeling you'll you'll finish this at that point, and then we open up the floodgates because I don't have anything planned deuce x railroad adventures after that the world is your oyster and you guys can do whatever you want this is a sandbox hex crawl butter hot sauce put it on a cracker and let's eat yeah pretty much that, that's how that's how i'm rolling with this you have this in giant pre-populated world map there are no set pois there's no names for any areas on the map that's all going to be done by either you guys or by by people in chat. Uh, we are going to be putting in a uh, casual coin reward to where you guys, and we prefer that to take the names if you you take naming things seriously a little bit. I'd like like it, you know, you know, not it to be the forest of McFart's butt face. That would suck. Um, but we will be uh, allow you guys to queue up stuff in the casual reward redemption, and we'll be applying names accordingly as we run into points of interest as we continue on in the campaign. So you guys out there in chat will be able to help us build the world and name locations as we find them live on stream. It's uh, going to be fun. At least I hope it's fun. Um, we had considered giving the GM rerolls, but I have a feeling at this point it's just better if the party has rerolls and allows them to make me reroll. The Forest of Lost Puppies. See, that's why you don't get to name shit, Mad Dog. <laughs> Maybe something a, l a little more, or, you know, anachronistic. <laughs> So you could always just reserve the right to veto a name. 
Well, that's the thing, though. I will go down the list. So if somebody claims something, uh, we will be re refunding casual coins to names that aren't considered as we go through the list of redemption names that people uh, come up with. Um, and we will be making that hopefully live in the next couple of weeks. So that's, uh, that's good fun. Um, other than that, what'd you guys think? Um, yay, nay, thumbs up, thumbs down. Was it okay, Siphon, tonight? Good night? Yeah, yeah, good start. Improv is fun. Minus burning it. a rat ogre to death. Um, I mean, that's what made us enjoy. That, that, that was kind of the highlight of the evening. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Some of the spells kind of interesting to play with. The, the slime was interesting. I didn't think you were going to get a critical shot right in the center of it with a flaming arrow. I'm like, well, that encounter's shot. Oh, well. But um, uh, at least I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, but if you're going to hang out, awesome. I'll talk to you in a bit. Otherwise, if you got to go, I'll see you later. All right. Y'all have a good night. You too. Okay. You too. All right, guys, that is going to do it for tonight's stream. I'm like, it's like going on 2 a.m. here, but I needed, I wanted to run late to give you guys the full content that I've always promised. You know, we, we got started almost an hour late tonight, actually a little over an hour late. Um, so hopefully I made up for that. Uh, tune in tomorrow. We're going to be doing some more Mega Mech with Hand of Stire. Um, but that's all I got. So before I go, I want to give a big shout out and a thank you to all the support tonight dragon blue with the prime resub the raid from commander bishop thank you so much for the raid sir ghost wolf with the gifted sub despair bam with the tier three resub and all of the awesome follows um and also from uh a follow from our friends over at budget publishing uh, who hopefully we will be doing a review and a sh a one shot of their new game system or their new game called Blood, Sweat, and Steel, uh, loosely based off of the Fate Core and Fudge rules, with his own take on running a sword and sorcery um, game. Um, we're going to be doing a review of it live on stream here uh, when we get to that point as well so i'm looking forward to it i hope you guys are looking forward to it as well um only great things from here on out so uh, i'll let you guys go i know it's late have a wonderful night and if i don't see you tomorrow night for mega mac have an even better weekend but that's it so thank you so much i'll talk to you later god bless every single one of you be good to each other and as always keep it casual i'm out of here